Sports. We are The Angels are back home as they host the Los Angeles Dodgers. We take you inside Tepe Diablo Stadium. The Angels glad to be back home. This is the first of four spring training meetings between the Angels and the Dodgers. They'll also play each other four times in the regular season in the month of May. And Jose, great to be back at Tepe Diablo Stadium, and it's going to be great, hopefully, to see Jared Weaver back on the hill today. Even better if he goes out there, Terry, and repeats his outing and his performance that uh, we saw first against the Chicago Cubs over in Mesa. And for Weaver, I think we all know by now it is a must that he's got to have pinpoint control. He's got to be able to drop the fastball. He's got to be able to mix in a little bit more. You know, and pitching inside is something that he'll continue to do because he's done it throughout his whole career. And velocity or not, it's going to be a good pitch location to set up for the off speed. But I'm, one thing we know for sure, too, Terry, is we, throughout his career, a much better pitcher at home than on the road. And he took it to another extreme last season when on the road he had an ERA over six. And at home, he was the weave of old. His ER was 2.79. I'm looking forward to see what he does today with those extra 15 pitches he will have. Well, Jared Weaver looked pretty good in his first Cactus League start, a two-inning appearance and shutout baseball against the Chicago Cubs. Well, his catcher today will be Giovanni Soto, newcomer with the Angels. Carlos Perez is certainly battling for that number one catcher spot. What can you tell us about Carlos so far this spring? Well, the fact that you mentioned Soto, you know, Carlos Perez is kind of feeding and, and making sure that Giovanni Soto knows who Weaver is. But for Carlos, my it's goodness, he's really brought that September game we saw when he had three 77 now into spring training he looks way more comfortable he knows it is his job to be the number one guy we'll see how everything ends up here at the end of spring training but i think we see a guy terry that's not afraid to throw behind the runners he's got a quick release he's got great feet and one thing that really caught my ear yesterday after the game the fact that mike Sosha said well he was upset about a pitch he did not block it pretty much goes with what the Angels have been pretty much in philosophy throughout the years about concentrating on helping out those pitchers. The way things were split out last year between three catchers, we'll see that because of 75 games he started last year, he will get the bulk here in 2016. Well, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to block some of those pitchers from Garrett Richards because of that movement. Speaking of the Angels, they were in action against the D-backs at Salt River Fields in yesterday's ball game. Angels came into that game with only three home runs, but had a couple in the same inning. Well, the great thing is that as Dave Hansen, the Angels hitting coach, told us a couple of days ago, he has been liking the at-bats and the approach, and we saw it more in play yesterday. It started against Robbie Ray, the lefty, where he was a little bit tough against the Angels. Then they brought in the right-hander, and they absolutely turned things on, taking advantage of pitches around the eyes, around the letters. It was a combined effort from the top of the lineup all the way to the bottom and just putting pressure, working counts, and driving the baseball. Now it's time we have your 10, 15, 20 at bats. We start getting a great feel for your balance, your hands, how everything is working, and of course apply it and make the runs count here so you get the confidence going into the season. Well, it's the Angels and the Dodgers today. The Dodgers have a new manager, Don Mattingly, no longer with them. He's the skipper of the Marlins. He took them to three NL West titles. Dave Roberts, a former Dodgers player, is now their skipper. Yes, you don't see teams change managers after the success that Don Mattingly had, as you mentioned, Terry. But uh, Dave Roberts is a tremendous asset to the organization, to the city of L.A. He's a UCLA product. He played in four different postseasons. He is a grinder of a player. Same mentality as a manager now. And Buddy Black. Angels now advisor to the general manager has nothing but praises for Dave Roberts and what he will bring with the communication that he saw in San Diego with Dave and the players. So the Angels and the Dodgers getting set to square off for the first time this spring. The pitching matchup, Jared Weaver will go for the Angels. Scott Casimir, who spent a little bit of time in an Angel uniform, 2010, also the 2011 season, he'll be making his second start for the Dodgers. He signed with them this past offseason. We have a beautiful day for baseball here in Tempe. The Angels taking on the Dodgers. We'll have the start Starting lineups and the start of today's game. It's coming up next on Fox Sports West.
afternoon here in Tempe Diablo Stadium. We welcome you. There is definitely a different buzz on the air as the LA Dodgers meet up against the Angels. And for sure, new Dodger manager Dave Roberts. Happy to see so many old friends. This is Mike Sosha and his Angels. A matchup between SoCal teams all set to go here for all of you. And the lineup for Dave Roberts. Jock Peterson, what a great first half of the season. Peterson is in center field batting first. Andre Ethier, the veteran left fielder, is batting second. Adrian Gonzalez, always steady with the production at first base, also with that glove. He bats third. Scott Van Slyke, who can pop a ball here and there. He has a lot of power. He's in right field batting fourth. Is Monty Grandal, who did so well against the Angels in the regular season last year. Grandal is a catcher batting fifth. He was an all-star. Corey Seager, the talk of the town, and high expectations for this young man. What a great showing in a call-up later in the season right into the playoffs. Seager is batting sixth at shortstop. Austin Barnes makes a start, batting seventh, designated hitter. Rob Sagan, what a surprise for everybody. He's playing third base and batting eighth. He's got some big numbers. We'll talk about it during the game. And batting ninth is back to the Dodgers, Elian Herrera at second base. The weave on the mound for the Angels, and the Angels starting lineup is brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Yunel Escobar, so far doing well here in the spring at third base leading off. Cole Calhoun moving up to number two this afternoon. Cole Calhoun is in right field. Gold Glover. Mike Trout in center field. Four for eight so far in the spring. Trout is batting third. Albert Pujols playing his third game of the spring. Still looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 5. Pools, DH, every report is he's feeling really good. And batting fifth is CJ Crone at first base. Batting sixth, off to a very good start is Daniel Nava in left field. Batting seventh, already dazzling with that glove at shortstop, Anderton Simmons. Batting eighth, Giovanni Soto, who is catching the weave here this afternoon. And batting ninth, the spark, the energy, the passion of Johnny Giovatella. He is batting ninth and playing second base. It is former Angel and former Astro, former A. Scott Casper on the mound, so the Angels will get to see lefty pitchers on back-to-back -back starts after seeing Robbie Ray for the D-backs yesterday. So the Angels will try to continue to keep going here, Terry, on the offensive side, and hopefully they'll see some better swings and keep producing, especially early in the game, with the regulars. All right, Jose, we are just about ready for the action as the Angels and the Dodgers get ready to match up against each other. First batter up will be Jock Peterson. Umpires Jim Wolf behind the plate. Jerry Davis, Jim Reynolds, and Chris Guccione are the umpires on the bases. Angels have the red tops, white pants. Dodgers have the blue tops, the gray pants. Dimensions at Tempe Diablo Stadium. 340 down the left field side. 360 down the right field side. 420 to dead center. And in the alleys and left center and right center, 400 feet. So Weaver is set to go. Facing a left-handed batter and the first pitch today. It's a fastball to misses high. We're underway in the Cal. One ball, no strikes. 75 degrees. Pleasant day for baseball here in the Valley. Here's the next one on Peterson. And that ball is hit well into right field. Cole Calhoun is going to turn around and watch it leave in right center. That is a home run by Peterson. His first of the spring. It's one nothing Dodgers. Explosion off the bat early for Jock Peterson, his first of the spring. He's been at a tremendous first half of the season, tailed off, ended up with 26 home runs, and a welcome side to see that swing back in blue. So Jared Weaver did not allow any runs in his start Friday against the Cubs. But he has given up one quickly here in the top of the first inning today. It goes back to that margin of error, as we find out very quickly. It's very tiny right now for Jared Weaver. So here's Andre Ethier, another left-handed batter, and he takes that one for ball one. It's one ball, no strikes. Jared ready. Here's his next pitch. And that is low and inside. Two balls, no strikes. Weaver, 33 years old, right-hander. 
Six seven, two hundred ten pounder, fastball, sinker, slider, curve, and change up. The two zero -oh, uh, cut and a miss on an off speed pitch. You see, mechanically, Weaver has been adjusting to a different setup and twist with his lower body. Where he's giving more of his back to the hitter than he had in previous seasons. He's trying that out right now. Here's the next pitch, and he's high and outside with that one. So he's falling behind here on each year. Three balls, one strike. There's where velocity goes down. Trying to create more deception one way or the other. In the tall frame, whatever it works, he's going to try it. Here's the 3 1. And that is low and inside. It's a five pitch walk. Sure, did not have any walks in his first start last week against the Cubs. Adrian Gonzalez, the third straight left handed batter, will step up against Jared Weaver. And look at this shift here where Mike Sosha has already said he wants to keep Anderton Simmons around the shortstop position. Or in a shift like this, you'll usually see a third baseman just move over. Everybody slides over, but he's got Escobar now playing between the second baseman, Jevatella, and the first baseman, Crone. Adrian Gonzalez showing signs of bunting with that shift on against him, and he ends up taking that pitch for ball one. One ball, no strikes. All the Angels actually churning some double plays earlier today. The ball starting with the third baseman, where he is. Working on that uh, always uh, picturesque five, six, three double play. We were with a toss over to first base. Ether, who's the base runner, not much of a stolen base threat, only two a year ago. Jared behind, one ball, no strikes. Here's the next one on Adrian Gonzalez, and that one misses low. Jim Wolf, who's calling balls and strikes, known as one of the better uh, ball and strike umpires in the game. Rewarded for that last year when he went and worked all the way through the World Series. Next delivery, that's right in there for a called strike. Should mention in the fourth inning today on our broadcast, Ken Rosenthal will join us from Fox Sports. We'll talk... All kind of baseball with him he's in the got fourth it. inning. He's got the connections. He's got the breaking news. Always good to see Kenny around. Here's the next delivery, and that is right in there for a called strike. So it's two and two on the third batter for the Dodgers, Adrian Gonzalez. The cleanup man today is Scott Van Slyke. Next pitch, lifted in the air, foul down the left side. It's going to push back and out of play. It's a pretty good job there by Adrian. And as much as he might get jumpy and anxious and over-anxious to swing and play into the slow pitches, Adrian had a very good idea there he to stay back. And that's the name of the game. First meeting this spring between the two clubs. Angels will play the uh, Dodgers again on Friday. Here's a ball bounced on the right side. Could be two. Flip to second. Relay to first. It is a double play. And that will be a 4-6-3 double play, even though uh, there are a lot of changes as far as how the Angels were lining up, especially on the right side of the infield. It ended up being the all-conventional 4-6-3. Good communication there with Johnny Gervatella and Escobar as to who's going to get that ball. Johnny right with it. Good to see him get some repetitions with Simmons up the middle. So here's Van Slyke. He's having a pretty good spring. Four hits, including a homer. Takes the first one for a strike. When we get to the bottom of the first, and it's one nothing Dodgers. It'll be Escobar, Calhoun, and Trout against Scott Casimir. There's the next pitch, and that one uh, pitch a little bit low. Weaver's next delivery. That's a shot right up the middle. Diving and stopping at Giovatella from his knees. Throws, and he gets him. 
How about Johnny Giavatella flashing a little bit of leather out there at second? Go out there and get it done, Johnny. Yes, sir. Nice play. So that'll end the inning. A run on a hit. The leadoff homer by Peterson. Dodgers have a 1-0 lead on the Angels. We go to the bottom of the first on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Bottom of the first we go. The Angels getting ready to step up against Scott Kazmir. one nothing Dodgers on top. Kazmir, the first appearance he had this spring, he was hit around a little bit. That was a ball game last week against the Texas Rangers. He gave up six hits in two innings and a couple of runs. So he gets ready to face the Angels' leadoff batter, Yunel Escobar. Here's the first pitch, and that is a called strike on the outside corner. Escobar, four for 11 so far in the Cactus League. Right-handed batter, and here comes the next pitch. Lifted in the air into right center field. Hit pretty well, but backtracking, making the grab on it is Van Slyke. Hit in the gap, but Van Slyke runs it down for the first out. That's pretty much the type of contact we've seen so far from Yanel Escobar. And while he came into this game, having gone 4 for 11. Solid approach all the way around. So the next batter will be Cole Calhoun. Calhoun, 6 for 11 so far in the Cactus League. He's driven in a run. And the first delivery, lefty-lefty matchup. That one is tap foul right by the plate. And after giving Calhoun some at-bats behind Pujols for a couple of games, Mike Sosha is getting him back to the number two slot. Still trying out how things will match up during the regular season for his lineup. As Naba moves down to number six. Here's the next delivery, and that one is way low and outside for a ball. Casimir last year allowed a higher average by plenty against left-handers, 272 average, and against right-handers, he was absolutely dominant, 225. Slugging much higher also against left-handers. Here's the pitch, and that's low. So it's two balls in one strike. Casimir pretty much though he during the regular season last year he pretty much owned the Angels in two starts he had an ERA of 0 0.60. There's one that Calhoun takes and that's in there for a strike so it's two and two. 
Scott Kazmir, one of the new additions to the Dodgers rotation. And the Dodgers have been dealing with some injuries as far as their rotation this spring. Here's the next pitch, and that one is low and outside. Yeah, the big news, of course, is Brent Anderson is out. The back issues continue to plague him, and he is out for the season. Bulging disc had surgery this month, and the pitch, and that is ball four. So Casimir walks Calhoun, patient at bat for Cole, and now Mike Trout will be the batter with a runner on and one away. In the City of Angels, here's a face, number 27. Just a limited time, Terry, that <laughs> we've seen Mike here go to the plate. It seems like everything he has hit has been on a line. Squaring up the baseball oh, so man, far. Loud. First pitch right in there for a called strike. Trout's had four hits in, eight at-bats. Home run. Next one on Trout, thought about chasing it, lays off it, and the pitch is in there for a strike. Castro got him guessing on that one, and for the nice get over slider for strike one. Goes back to the fastball. Trout, like Calhoun, would like to cut down on those strikeouts. And maybe do a little variation with the two-strike approach, which includes, he says, now a little bit of choking up on the bat. And there we see it. Here's the next delivery, and that one is outside. So it's a uh, ball and two strikes on uh, Mike Trout. Terry, Barry Bonds choked up on the bat. Why can't more players do that nowadays? What are they so afraid of? I don't know. What is it, a macho thing? Something. Here's the pitch. That's grounded foul on the left side. It was almost mandated to a lot of young players years ago as they were coming up through the minor leagues. To, if, you're, if you're a slap guy and you're a contact hitter, two strike, just go out there and allow yourself better back control by choking up. And again, not to say it's a general concept for everybody, but uh, why not try it out? Here's Casimir's next delivery that's low and inside. Dave Winfield. Choked up on his bat. There's a little thunder for you. Yeah, there's a guy right there at his size and his strength. Huh? You wouldn't expect that. <laughs> but again, uh, you have to be comfortable doing it. You have to. If, <laughs> if, if it gets in your head, as you mentioned, the macho thing of the ego or just don't feel comfortable, you're better off not yeah. toying around with it. Here's the next one on Trout 2-2, two -two, and that is the pitch he checks on, so it's another full count. Casper is pretty much treating this at bat like a regular season at bat. He's thrown pretty much everything at Trout from the fastball tailing away for a strike. Short slider for a strike, change up down in the zone. Casper was a guy early in his big league career who walked a lot of batters. He's been a lot better, though, as far as command as he's gotten older. Here's the payoff pitch. Trout fouls that one off, stays alive. Ball back and out of play. The Dodgers are Casimir's fourth club in the last four years. He was with the Cleveland Indians in 2013, Oakland in 2014, Oakland and Houston last year. And now in his first year with the Dodgers, first year of a three-year deal, he signed with them. For well, the opportunity to opt out after one season. The new trend around baseball for free agents. There's one to Trout lifts in the air down the right field side. It's tight to the line, but it will land foul way down in that right field corner. Locking this approach, locking this at bat all the way around for Mike Trout. Angels are making Casimir throw some pitches here in the first inning. Facing just his third batter. You have to be mighty strong to 
protect home plate on the outer half. A square ball like that and hit it that far from this side. 41 home runs for Trout last year. So here's the 3 2 once again, and Trout takes ball four. So, boy, a couple of patient at bats for the last two Angels. Trout and Calhoun back to back walks on 3 2 payoff pitches. And now Albert Pujols has a chance to do a little damage here in the bottom of the first inning with two aboard, one out. Albert feeling comfortable. He's hit a couple balls right on the nose to the pole side of the infield. Still looking for that first hit here of the spring. All for five so far. Kazmir is ready. Here's the first one on Albert. Called strike on the outside corner. Kazmir fastball, sinker, slider, curve, change. A good slider, pretty good change up. He likes to use that change against right handed batters. Curveball, he doesn't throw that all that much. Top out in the low 90s with the fastball. The pitch that's grounded by Casimir through into center field. That's going to be Albert's first hit of the spring. It's going to drive in a run to tie the ball game up. 1 1 on the blue hole single right up the middle. Well, that's a welcome sign for the Angels. The table setters do their jobs. And there's Pujols <laughs> asking uh, Mike Trout, why aren't you at third base? Go out there and challenge somebody. Now we're having a good time. Right through the middle. There's that's another sign, too, with Pujols <laughs> saying to her, you know what? They can put whatever shift they want on me. I cannot change who I am as a hitter. So the last three have reached base safely. Two more on, one run in, one out. Crone, the hitter, goes after the first pitch, fouls it off on the right side. Today's game being brought to you by In-N-Out Burger. That's what a hamburger is all about. Casper had a tough outing, first time out. He allowed six hits in two innings, allowing a couple of runs. And apparently having more command issues as he did his last time out. Here's the pitch, and that's a strike on the outside corner. So Crone has fallen behind, nothing and two against Kazmir, with Daniel Navus having a good spring waiting on deck. Here's the next pitch, and that is waved at and missed. Fooled on that off-speed pitch is C.J. Crone. That's the second out. Staying with his plan is Scott Casper. Trying to get a feel for the off-speed, setting everything up with his fastball. And you were talking about his command issues earlier in his career when he was also a high strikeout pitcher. Well, that fastball was in the mid 90s. Uh, he led the league in strikeouts one season, pitching for the Tampa Bay, back then, the Devil Rays. Right. Led the league in walks one year at 100 walks, but that was early in his career. His control has certainly gotten better. Here's the pitch. That's right in there for a called strike. But Kazmir's control has hurt him here in this inning. The pair of walks factoring into the angel run. Nava's had six hits in just ten at bats so far this spring, so he's been hot. Switch hitter batting right, driven in four runs. Trying to win playing time with that open spot in left field. Here's the pitch. That's outside. One ball, one strike on Daniel Nava. You can see Mike Trotter at second base working. On a secondary lead or walking lead. We saw Craig Gentry, who has great instincts as a base runner, still third base yesterday. It all starts with knowing who's up the middle and not setting your feet. Got to keep it moving at second base. Get some momentum. Randall signaled to Casimir, uh, and the two of them uh, met out in front of the mound. Want to talk things over with two outs, one and one count.
Kazmir with a peak at second. Trout has a good size lead. Not going though. And the next delivery, that one is low. And taking you back to Trout last season, Mike Trout had one attempt of stealing third base. And he was safe. Eric Ibar actually led the team with three times stealing third base. Here's the next delivery, and that is on the outside corner for called strike. Mentioned Ibar, his name's kind of been floating around a little bit. And so are a few others as far as uh, the St. Louis Cardinals right now. Johnny Peralta out for maybe, what, up to three months? Broken thumb? Yeah, he's hoping to be back maybe in June. Here's the pitch. Lifted in the air in the right center field. Chasing hard, diving, and making the... Trapping that ball is the center fielder, Peterson. Angels have gotten a run in and take a 2-1 lead. Peterson is uh, trying to plead his case with the umpire saying, hey, I caught that ball, but there's no uh, challenges or replays here, and that's going to be an RBI hit for Nava, and the Angels have a 2-1 lead. Peterson is absolutely convinced that he caught that baseball, so is his right fielder, Vance Light. A play, obviously, that makes no difference to the base runner. You're going to go on contact anyways. And on a ball that apparently umpire Jerry Davis saw that he, even though it got to his glove, he might have lost it there for a minute. A little juggling. Well, Dave Roberts, if he wanted to, could go out and say something to the umpires, maybe ask him to talk about it. And You know what will be happening right now in the regular season. <laughs> Here's the pitch. At the plate, fouling that one off is Simmons for strike one, back and out of play on the right side. He's the seventh batter up in the inning. Angels have put a two spot on the board in the first inning, have the lead. And Daniel Nava continues to hit the ball well from the right side of the plate. Terry making things even more interesting for the Angels manager. There's the pitch on its way. That one is on the outside corner. Well, no. Uh, Mike Sosha has joked around with Nava during uh, batting practice when he's taking his swings in BP saying, hey, uh, swing the bat the way you always used to do it against us. <laughs> and uh, that's what he's done so far this spring. Seven for 11. Five RBIs. Next pitch. That's grounded through on the right side. That's going to be another run. Simmons has his first RBI this spring. Coming in and scoring for the Angels is Pujols. It's 3-1 Angels. Well, they've worked Casper out of 30 pitches, and yesterday we saw Simmons hit one off the label and forcing himself to stay back when he cracked his first hit of the spring. And now, same approach a little bit later. Just allowed that ball to travel, and there is a result. If Simmons opens up that side of the field for himself, forget about it. It would be more of an offensive force that the Angels need in the bottom of that lineup. Pitching coach Rick Honeycutt out there to talk to Casimir. Casimir already at 30 pitches this inning. And this being the second outing of the spring, this limit is coming down to maybe another 15 to 20 at the most. So that'll wrap up the meeting. And the batter now is Giovanni Soto, hitter number eight here in the bottom of the first. 3-1 Angels. Kazmir's delivery. Called strike on the outside corner. Soto behind the plate today. He's had one hit so far this spring. Seven at bats. Next one on the Angels catcher. That one is inside. It misses for a ball. And for Giovanni Soto, an even more pronounced shift than the Dodgers had against Albert Pujols. The second baseman, Elian Herrera, is all the way on the other side of the bag.
Here's the next delivery, and that's outside. Two balls and one strike. And here's the pitch. And that one misses, and a snap throw to second, and diving back to the bag goes the lead runner, Daniel Navas. So Casimir, who's already walked a couple in the inning, has fallen behind here. Three and one on Soto. Oh, yeah, to actually duck that throw from the ground down, who almost nipped the pitcher himself. Good hitters count here for Soto. Three balls, one strike. Next delivery he goes after that one and fouls it back behind the plate. In recent years, when Soto has kind of bounced around a little bit, he was with the White Sox last year and he was with Texas the year before, but he kind of got linked with uh, some pretty good starting pitchers. He was the personal catcher for you, Darvish, in 2014. And last year, he was really some Marge's personal catcher with the White Sox, although that didn't pan out that well. Here's one that's popped in the air in the right center field. A lot of people chasing it. It'll be Peterson who comes in from his spot in center to make the grab, and that will end the inning. Angels send up eight here in the bottom of the first and score three. It's 3-1 three Angels as we go to the second on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Second inning, it's 3-1 Angels. This copyrighted broadcast presented by Authority of Angels Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of today's game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball. Terry Smith, Jose Moda, and our producer engineer Darren Chan with you here from Tempe. First delivery from Jared Weaver now working with the lead is in there on the catcher Yasmani Grandal. Switch hitter batting left. Here's the next pitch. And that's in there for a called strike. That's what we need to see from the weed from here on till the end of the season. Just absolutely pinpoint on the black. Here's the next pitch. That's low and inside. It misses. Yes, Manny Grandal, one of the best framers in the game. Became an all star last year. And the next delivery that's fouled off not too far from our booth. It drops just below. Grandon born in Havana, Cuba. So a shoulder injury really 
limit his power. The second half of the season. He only had two home runs after the All-Star game. After hitting 14 before the All-Star game. It seems like that shoulder is just fine. And he was a key piece for the Dodgers behind the plate and with his abilities to swing the bat from both sides of the plate. There's another one he fouls back, dropping below us out of play. Grandal, an all star for the first time in his career. That was a year ago. Born in Cuba, came to the U.S. when he was right around 10 years old. And here's a ball that he pops in the air into very shallow center of the shortstop. That is Simmons uh, going back to make the grab on it. And that'll be the first down. It could be very frustrating when you see somebody who is not even registering on the radar gun. And uh, you see the ball well, but your body is just not totally in sync with what your eyes see. And that's what we see Grandal pop it up and just have one of those eyes. I cannot believe I didn't crush that pitch. So here is Seeger, and here's the pitch. That one uh, taken for ball one. Jerry, that could be said about many fine pitchers around baseball. Oh, yeah. How many guys go back to the dugout going, I, I, I can't believe I didn't crush that. Next pitch, that one is hit hard, but jumping up and nabbing it is second baseman Johnny Giavatella. Seeger, a uh, fine rookie for the Dodgers, lining out, hit the ball hard, but he's retired. And here is Austin Barnes, who... Saw some action last year with the Dodgers. 20 games for them. He's a guy who can play a number of positions. Catch, second base, third base. He is DHing in this ball game. And here's the pitch. That's a pitch on the inside corner. And Barnes is related to a New Angels Director of Baseball Development, Mike Gallego. Mike Gallego is his uncle. There you go. There's the pitch a little bit low. Mike Gallego brings another dynamic to the Angels organization. We've seen him very active around the infield and many of the diamonds here in camp. Here's the pitch. Boy, that one is crushed down the left field side. That ball is really hit and gone to the back part of the lawn out there. No doubt about that one. Second home run that Weaver has allowed today. A solo shot to Barnes. That's his first home run this spring. And the Angel lead is cut to 3-2. to two. Boy, that came out of nowhere. Oh, he's got a short stroke. He saw strike one from the fastball. Was able to time it well and get a good look as to what the fastball was doing. And once again, missed location. Too much out over the plate. And he just put a tremendous thunder on that one. First pitch on Rob Sagadin, who's playing uh, third base for them. A ball to count 1 0, and the uh, next delivery. That's inside. Rob Sagadin, you talk about some power display here early in the spring. A couple home runs for him. He came in one game. He's got five hits, three doubles, and two home runs. Here's the next delivery. He takes a big cut at that one and fouls it off on the right side out of play. I'm sure uh, Billy Epler, the Angels' new GM, uh, familiar with Sagadin. He was in the Yankee organization, double A, triple A last year. 287 batting average. Been around. He's 27 years old. Now in the Dodgers system. Here's the pitch. That's ripped but foul on the left side. So they're getting some swings in right now. And the count even, it's two and two. Fans, don't forget, spring training baseball is live with MLB.com at bat app. Stay connected all spring with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone or tablet. Counts full. We'll see what gives on the 3 2. Weaver is ready, and here it comes. That's hit well into left field, and chasing hard after it is Nava. He has a beat on it, and right there, the warning track in left center gathers that one in. A long out to end the inning. A run on a hit, the home run by Barnes. And as we go to the bottom of the second, it's 3 2 Angels on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. 
Johnny G. Vitella, the only hitter in the lineup who did not bat in the first inning, will lead things off here in the second against Kazmir. It's 3-2 Angels as we start the bottom of the second. Here's the first pitch. That's in there for a called strike. Nothing and one to count. Uh, Johnny has already made a difference in this ballgame with his glove. A 4-6-3 double play that he started, then a diving play to Rob. And it's like also to finish off that first inning. Here's the next pitch. That's a little bit low and away. It's one ball, one strike. I want to remind you, Experian, let's get serious about your credit. Go to Experian.com today. <coughs> Here's the next one from Casimir. Gia Batella takes it low. Johnny's had uh, his share of at-bats here in the early going in the Cactus League. 15 at-bats, three hits for him so far. And the next pitch chopped on the left side. This one is handled by Seeger. His throw will get Giovatella. So an easy ground down, one gone. You know Escobar will be the next batter. Let's check out the Jeep Out of Town scoreboard on this Wednesday. It's brought to you by Jeep Cherokee, an estimated 31 miles per gallon highway. It's the perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com for more information. And in the Florida Grapefruit League, eighth inning, Astros have a 9-5 lead against the Braves. Freddie Freeman hitting his second home run this spring. Marwin Gonzalez is second this spring for the Astros. Boston has a 6-2 lead against the Pirates in the eighth. Miami up on St. Louis, 5-3 in the ninth. As Escobar fouls that one off right side out of play. Toronto leads Tampa Bay 5-1 in the eighth. Detroit has a 10-4 lead against Washington in the eighth inning. Scott Sizemore's third home run this spring for Washington, trying to win a spot on their roster. Kinsler, Salta, Lamaki, and Cabrera have all hit their second home runs this spring for Detroit. There's a pitch that Escobar checks on. It's a ball, one and one So Mega Cabrera has two home runs already? He does. What's new? Yep. Best hitter in the planet. There's no one better in baseball than Miguel Cabrera right now. Sort the stick. The Mets and Yankees are playing today, and they're actually going to the 10th inning in their game. It's 4-4. Here's a bouncer hit on the right side. It's stuck by Herrera. He spins and throws from the outfield grass and gets Escobar for the second out. Two are gone. Also, Philly split squad beat Baltimore 8-4. The other Philly split squad beat Minnesota 4-2. So a pretty good day for Philadelphia in the Grapefruit League. Now, Clanton. 
and a good friend doing some good things over in Philly. New general manager of the Phillies. Team that not too many people think will be much of a factor in the National League East this season, but a team that's kind of uh, put together a lot of good young personnel. Made a lot of trades the uh, last few seasons, and uh, they have greatly improved their farm system and hoping some of those players can become established at the major league level. Yeah, some of those contracts hurt the Phillies. Now is transition time. There's a pitch a little bit inside on Cole Calhoun. He has a walk and he scored a run. Casimir really struggled in the first inning. He's gotten a couple of ground ball outs here in the second. Calhoun gets time from the home plate umpire Jim Wolf. Now everyone is ready, and the next pitch, Cole was jammed. He fights that one off and fouls it back to the screen. You were talking about the Tigers and that score and the home runs. You mentioned Miguel Cabrera. Terry, they have a catcher, Brian Holiday, who's got nine RBIs already in the spring. Uh -huh. Huh? Well, if you're him, uh, you're, you might be thinking, i got to save a few of these <laughs> for the regular season. But uh, Brian Holiday came into today's game hitting 636. Wow. One-two pitch. Cole Calhoun takes that one. Rolling outside, two and two. Left hander set, two two pitch, fouled off. So Calhoun is battling. We talked about it already this spring. Cole Calhoun uh, trying to do a little better job this season with two strikes. He's having a Good uh, two-strike at bat here. He walked on a 3-2 payoff pitch his first time up, but certainly looking to cut down the strikeouts. He was third in the American League last year, 164 strikeouts. Like Mike Trout, also trying a little choking up with two strikes, protecting the outer half. 2-2 two -two pitch. That's a liner. It's going to fall into right field for a base hit. Cleared Herrera, the second baseman, with that one, and it drops in front of Van Slake. So there's that two-strike approach, and Calhoun on for the second time. Play. Give yourself a chance. Choke up. Better back control. You can stay back a little bit longer. And it was a good job landing on time. So Calhoun now seven for 12 here in the spring. One of those seven hits, five have come with two strikes. So Trout now the batter. He's walked and scored. Here we can say it all we want here in the spring. And then the bell rings, and we want to see the same type of approach and hopefully the same type of result. No balls, one strike to count on Mike Trout. Albert Pujols waiting on deck. He picked up his first hit and first RBI of the spring last inning. 0 oh, 1. That's a little bit low. It's now one ball, one strike. We talked about Trout choking up before that walk. Now, watch. Where he's holding the bat here with less than two strikes on him. It's very clear that he was trying to pitch what we saw earlier in the first at bat. Thinking unloading here. Pitch on Trout. He goes the opposite way, lines that one to right field, chasing and unable to get to it as Vance Lake. The ball's by him and all the way out to the fence. Being waved home is Cole Calhoun. Trout will get the third easily with a diving RBI triple with two outs. And the Angels' lead gets a little bit bigger. It's now 4-2. He's got tremendous power going the other way with that short stroke. The ability to barrel the baseball. And then in the very end there, that ball drops in front of Van Slyke. And the spin on it absolutely fools Van Slyke. And that ball gets by him. Well, once again, Mike Trout just waiting on the baseball, exploding, using the backside and all the way through his core with some serious authority coming off the bat. Well, Albert stepping up with two outs. Angels saw the first two batters retired easily here in this inning. And then Calhoun's two-out hit. Trout's two-out RBI triple. And the first one on Albert uh, called strike. Nothing in one. After Pujols beat the Dodgers with a single through the box first time up. They're the second baseman now where they thought they should have had him earlier in the game. 
Left side infield shift on. Three infielders there. Just the first baseman, Gonzalez, on the right side. Next one on Albert. He fouls it off on the right side. Back and out of play. Albert, a year ago, hit just 244. That was the lowest batting average ever for him. But with that said, he was an all-star last year, and he did hit 40 home runs. <coughs> Drove in... 95 led the Angels in runs batted in a year ago and missed only five games. Here's the pitch. That bounces in. That's a good stop by Grandal. That ball gets by him, and that might be a run. Albert was also part of the home run derby, which you can see did not affect his swing. 40 home runs is 40 home runs. And in that first round, Albert was paired up against Chris Bryant. And he eliminated Chris Bryant from the derby. With a solid first round. Thanks to Dino Ebel, he says. He was his home run derby pitcher. One two pitch. He had Pujols reaching. He pops it in a shallow right field, tight to the line. That's going to drop in. That's a bloop RBI hit. Gonzalez, the first baseman, went back. It was over his head, and Van Slyke never quite got to it. It was hit very shallow near the foul line, and Pujols with a two-hit day so far. Pair of RBIs. It's 5-2 Angels. You see Pujols' reaction. Look what I just dropped in front of somebody over in uh, right field. RBIs and RBIs, single is a single, but protecting home plate in the outer half is a plus for anybody. And that's also going to be a knockout blow on Kazmir. So we'll have a pitching change here in the bottom of the second. Angels have a 5-2 lead on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. New pitcher for the Dodgers is the veteran Jamie Wright, who uh, signed a minor league deal with the Dodgers and pitched last season. And he signed that deal just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Let's pause for stations to identify themselves here on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Batter is C.J. Crone, right-hander against right-hander. Wright delivers, and the pitch that's on the outside corner. It's a called strike. Jamie Wright now 41 years old. He was a first-round pick of the Colorado Rockies in 1993. And as we mentioned, teams that he's played for, there's a couple times where he's been with teams more than two times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rockies, Royals. Dodgers. Those are the uh, 
two-time teams. <laughs> he's been with <laughs> yeah. a lot of other teams as well. He's a great Brewers, story. Cardinals, Giants, Indians, Rangers, Rays, Mariners. Here's a high fly ball lifted into left field, but it's hanging up for the left fielder, Andre Ethier. He makes the catch, and that will end the inning. But the Angels do come up with a couple of runs, two runs in the inning, and take a 5-2 lead as we go to the top of the third on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Top of the third inning, Angels up by a score of 5-2. to two. Jared Weaver's first pitch, and that one is taken for a called strike at the plate is the switch hitter, Elian Herrera. Fans in attendance for the Angels opening series against the Cubs on Monday, April the 4th, and Tuesday, April the 5th, will receive a wall calendar courtesy of U.S. Bank while supplies last. Every game matters, so purchase your tickets at angels.com. Here's the next delivery, and there's a swing and a miss. Well, there's no doubt there's been some hard contact against Jared Weaver here today. Six out of the eight batters he's faced have hit the ball on the nose. He has paid for a couple of mistakes heavily with home runs to Peterson and to Austin Barnes. But uh, what we're hoping for right now is as Weaver begins this inning with 34 pitches in the first two. Terry, a good finish. That is all he is looking for at this point. Hoping to complete three innings today. There's a breaking ball, and this one is hit pretty well into center field, but it's hanging up as Trout backpedals and makes the grab on it to retire Herrera, the nine-hole hitter. It's the first out here in the third, and batter will be Jock Peterson. Terry, you know who's making an appearance here right now? The Trout net. So the other day we saw a guy trying to fish some trout, and the Trout net is here. As they're close to their hero, number 27. So where is the trout net, Jose, out there? In, you don't uh, see it? In fact, the trout net house now has a uh, small camera <laughs> mounted on it. Here's the pitch. That's grounded through on the right side. That is a base hit. So Jack Peterson has been able to figure out Weaver. Seen three pitches from him today, and he's had two hits. Glad to see Jock this time hit it on the ground. Andre Ethier will be the next batter. They'll walk his first time up. Jared Weaver working with a 5-2 lead here as we start inning number three. Ethier saw a lot of pitches and work at that walk in the first inning. Well, I'm guessing he's going to have to try to be aggressive here early. 
Here's the pitch. There's a high pop up. And this one is out near the mound. Coming over is the first baseman, C.J. Crone, to make the catch. But there were a lot of people around there. You had well, the uh, catcher Soto, <laughs> third baseman Escobar, Weaver, and Crone. Well, Giovanni Soto had a lot of trouble with his feet getting rid of the mask and the helmet and then finding the baseball. And thankfully, there was Crone. So he found the trout net, right? I see the trout net, yep. Batter down is Adrian Gonzalez. Well, if you're Jared Weaver, you don't want to see any balls uh, head out to the trout net, do you? No. That's uh, designed only for number 27. <laughs> <laughs> we think. Angels have the shift on with Gonzalez batting pickoff toss over to first base and back to the bag goes Jock Peterson. Over in short right field is Yunel Escobar. We saw a similar formation the first step bat by Gonzalez, but the difference was there was a man at first base. And Escobar was in double play depth. Here's the pitch. That's high. Snap throw to first by Soto and just getting back. To the bag is Peterson. Go with that reaction for Crone and for so many in the Angels dugout. Who thought they had him? Good job by Giovanni Soto. A little of the Molinas and things he's learned and worked on a lot with Yadier Molina in the offseason in Puerto Rico. On staying behind the hitter and use that as a barrier. Here's the next pitch, and that goes right between the legs of Soto. And it'll B ball two and moving up on the uh, final pitcher pass ball to second is Peterson. Let's see what happened here. A quick visit to the mound. <coughs> you don't see this very often happening. And a little cross up with just the man at first base. But Soto, whatever it was, he was obviously fooled by the pitch. So they're going to score that a pass ball. That's a right call. Two balls and no strikes now with the runner at second. Two outs and the next delivery. That's a liner in the left center field. And that's going to bring in Peterson. He'll score from second without a throw. So a two-out RBI hit for Gonzalez. And now the Angel lead is at 5-3. That's the swim to Gonzalez pretty much that pattern for this type of game against Jared Weaver. That's why he has been a consistent producer through the years. 90 RBIs last year, 116 the year before. He's driven at 100 runs in three of the last four seasons. So the guy knows how to hit. So here is Scott Van Slyke. Two outs, a runner at first. It was a pitch high. Well, Jared Weaver in his first outing Friday against the Cubs did not allow any runs in his two innings. Not having quite as much success here today. A lot of mistakes. Low velocity, a lot of mistakes that he's paying for. Also, the hitters you know, anticipating a little bit more, more at bats under their belts here in the early going of spring training and timing him better. One ball, one strike to count. Gia Vitella playing almost behind second base. And here's the next pitch. That's chopped foul right behind home plate. So. Count one and two. We were trying to get that final out. Next one, it's fouled back to the screen, so the battle continues. Jared is set. 
Again, the one two pitch. That's hit well down the left field side, tight to the line. It will land foul. That's the visiting bullpen there that runs right alongside the uh, foul line down that left field area. Trying to get Van Slyke. Pretty good uh, matchup here. And there's one that's hit high and deep into left field. And it is going to leave. Another home run. That's the third for the Dodgers here in three innings. And that two run shot right there by Van Slyke, his second home run this spring, will tie up the game at five. Learning very quickly. The more mistakes, the better the barrel and the more contact. Another hitter that sees everything coming in slowly and just says, I cannot be afraid of getting jammed. In fact, uh, many hitting structures going back to last season were telling their batters, just go out there and look off speed. Nothing else. Sit off speed the whole time. Better now taking a strike is Grandall, the catcher. A tough day for Jared Weaver's next pitch. That one is right in there for called strike. The home run ball didn't really hurt Weaver all that much last season, season even though he's known as a fly ball pitcher. He gave up 12 last year. And the pitch, that one is ripped down the right side. It's going to roll all the way down in the right field corner. Heading for second base will be Grandal, and he will get there easily without a throw. So Weaver is just having trouble closing out this inning. Mike Sosha is now heading to the mound. And uh, we are going to have a pitching change. That double by Grandall will be a knockout blow here against Jared Weaver. So his day is over. He went two and two-thirds innings, and the Angels will go to the bullpen. We have a break in the action here in the third. It's a 5-5 ball game in Tempe on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Angels have brought in left-hander Jose Molina, who's from the Dominican Republic. We've seen him uh, pitch in a game already in the Cactus League. He was in the Tampa Bay organization at one time. Spent a little bit of time last year at Rancho Cucamonga. And the first batter he will face will be Corey Seager. 
Well, you know, signed back in 2009 originally by the Tampa Bay Rays. Here's the pitch. This is a high fly ball into shallow left center field. Battling the center a little bit out there, but making the grab is Daniel Nava. And Molina comes in, throws one pitch, and gets the final out. But they do get three in the inning. And they had four hits in the inning. In the inning, there were no errors, and they leave one on base. We are headed to the bottom of the third. A lot of runs on the board already. We're tied at five on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Jamie Wright continues for the Dodgers. He came in and got the final out, replacing their starter, Scott Casimir. Both Casimir and uh, Weaver struggled here today. So Daniel Nava gets set to bat. Switch hitter, he'll bat left-handed as he faces the veteran right-hander, Jamie Wright. Here's the pitch. That's in there for strike one. Daniel Nava now 7 for 11 here in spring training. We've seen pretty much a display of line to line, gap to gap approach from both sides of the plate. Always showing that good eye and patience at the plate. Next pitch. And that is right in there for a called strike. Oh, and 2 is the count. Right ready, here's his pitch. That is a pitch that misses. Well, Terry, that was Rogers ace. And outstanding performer all throughout baseball in his history. Clayton Kershaw that encouraged Jamie Wright to give it one more try after not pitching at all last season. They were playing catch in the offseason, and uh, before you know it, the ball's coming <laughs> out of his hand very nicely and Kershaw encourages him to say hey why not give him one more shot see if somebody will uh, bring you into camp and see what happens one thing where Jamie Wright once he made that transition to the bullpen is he's one of those guys that would just take the baseball he has the ability to rebound bounce back quickly over 700 games he's pitched in in the big leagues and the pitch there's a broken bat bouncer out of the reach of the second baseman Herrera so that is another hit for Nava. He has been a hit machine so far here in the early going of spring training. Yeah, that makes him 8 for 12, and he is finding some holes. 
Saw a piece of bat land way beyond the Angels dugout. And Rolton Simmons will be the next batter. He singled in a run his first time up. Talked about uh, Jamie Wright. 19 years in the majors. He's had a lot of teammates over the years. Kidding. With all the uh, different teams he's played for. He said as he works from the stretch, there goes the runner Nava in the pitch. It's chopped foul by Simmons over on the left side. Wright is pitching for the second time this spring, and he had a 1 2 3 inning as first appearance this spring for the Dodgers. Go we'll see Mike Sosha give Simmons something to think about and implement, putting runners in motion. But he's shown the ability the last couple of games to stay back and hit the ball the other way. Mainly for Simmons is to stay away from the fly balls. Next delivery runner goes again. That's lined by the mound and out of the reach of the second baseman Herrera once again. It skips into center and that's going to be a base hit and runners at the corners. So Wright isn't fooling anyone. He's given up back to back hits to start off the inning. The Angels are threatening to regain the lead. And Giovanni Soto will be the next hitter. Anderton stays right with it. Good job. As he continues to learn, he says, by watching Pujols and by watching Calhoun and, of course, watching Trout. A short swing to the baseball. Using the big part of the field. Going back to a few years ago, Anderton Simmons socked 17 home runs. So we'll see what Soto can do. Nice crowd today for this Wednesday afternoon ball game. Angels will host the D-backs here tomorrow and will play the Dodgers again Friday. That'll be at their ballpark, Camelback Ranch. Andrew Heaney is going to pitch the game for the Angels tomorrow. And that will be his first appearance so far this spring. And Mike Sosha says he is still on schedule. He was set back with the flu, but he's bounced back through his bullpens and done his work. Here's the pitch. That one is chopped foul. Well, you look so far here in the uh, Cactus League. Obviously, Jared Reaver had a rough outing. Yes, he did. How much you can read into that. Uh, who knows? Well, but, there, uh, but there's got to be more concern because that just tells you that's pretty much a display of what you don't want to see happen during the regular season. Right. Matt Shoemaker was uh, roughed up in his start against the Reds a couple days ago. Gave up three homers in that one. Garrett Richards uh, saw Richards struggle a bit in his most recent start. So... Um, Guys need to step up. You get him. Uh, hopefully, line. you get him out of your system. Right. I guess <laughs> need to step up. I still think there are more questions going into last season with the rotation. Not knowing about Santiago. Not knowing about Richards. About Heaney, Shoemaker. One ball and two strikes to count on Soto. The one thing you do know: it's tough to win if you don't get good. Starting pitching. And the Angels got it last year. There's no doubt. The Angels starting pitchers gave the Angels a chance to win on a consistent basis. The issue was they did not get the run support. Fourth lowest run support in the American League for the Angels starters. The other part of the uh, starting pitching equation is the fact we haven't seen C.J. Wilson yet. He's a question mark and he was supposed to... Uh, Get into his long toss program. He's behind. Yeah. Hoping to get back to the bullpen. Eventually some live BP and eventually into a game. There's the next pitch. That's low and outside. We've yet to see Tyler Skaggs uh, pitch in a game. I guess he had a bullpen session today. And uh, he will be facing some live hitters shortly before we might see him on the mound in a Cactus League game. He has thrown the ball very well to... Skaggs supposed to be on the mound against hitters. There goes the runner. The pitch is missed. The throw to second. A little bit high, and it's a stolen base. So Simmons steals second. 
Nava remains at third. He didn't break for the plate. And down on the strikeout is Soto for the first out. Soto chasing the pitch for strike three. Simmons stealing the strikeout. Pitch that uh, looks like it was easier to handle for Grandal and to throw a little bit high. A nice scooting there. Uh, he cutting the distance while the runner Simmons getting to second base. It's right under the tag. So here's Giovatelli. He bounced out the short his first time up. He thrived in situations like this a year ago on the pitch, and he drills one by the mound. Nice stop, though, by the second baseman, and Herrera will throw him out. Scoring easily will be Nava. And with any luck, uh, Giovatelli might have had a hit on that one, but it'll be a 4-3 RBI ground out. The Angels are back on top by run 6-5 as Simmons moves over to third. Yeah, Johnny Giovatella doing what Johnny does. Hit the ball hard. Use the middle. Outstanding play up the middle by Elian Herrera. Good contact by the Angels. Going back, Terry, to the middle of the game last night. Much better at bats. Here's Escobar batting for the third time in the game. We're only in the third inning. 6-5 Angels leading the Dodgers, and the pitch hits low and away. When we get to the fourth inning, we'll be joined by Ken Rosenthal of Fox Sports. He'll visit with us for the fourth inning today. Maybe we'll get some... Uh, <laughs> Late-breaking baseball news or some hot rumors. What do you think, Jose? I'm sure he has it. Two balls, no strikes. I'll be relying on you to pry as much information from Ken Rosenthal as you possibly can. Well, it's an open mic, so there's nothing that he's going to hear from me that he's not going to hear from you. So. Oh, you think there's a little connection? There's a colleague also at MLB Network. Here we go. There's a pitch that bounces by the catcher. Grandall easily scoring will be Simmons. And the Angels get a gift run right there on the wild pitch. So it's 7 5. Well, take him any way you can. And this time it was Grandall who has trouble handling Jamie Wright. As Simmons was getting down that line, anticipating because. The many sliders that Jamie Wright does throw. Here's the next pitch. That's on the outside corner for called strike. So it's a 3 1 count. No one on base now. Angels have gotten a couple in this inning. And the pitch. This is chopped to the shortstop. Seeger has it. His throw to first is in plenty of time. And that's how the inning will end. 6-3 on the ground out. Angels get a pair here in the bottom of the third. A lot of scoring for the Angels. Seven runs already. We head to the fourth at 7-5. Halos on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Back in Tempe, where the Angels have a 7-5 lead. We go to the fourth inning. Joe Smith is pitcher number three of the day for the Angels. He replaces Jose Molina, who got the find out behind Jared Weaver. And fans, don't forget, take part in the Angels 5K and Fun Run. It's presented by St. Joseph Hogue Health on April the 9th at the Big A. All participants will receive a commemorative shirt and finisher's medal. Register today at angels.com slash 5K. Well, Ken Rosenthal from Fox Sports is alongside with us for the fourth inning. And, uh, Ken, welcome to uh, Tempe Diablo Stadium. Thank you very much, Terry. <laughs> How much uh, time have you spent here, uh, even in the Cactus League, I guess, in the past? Let's see. I've been here about five days. I'll be here about 12 total. Usually that's what I do, 12 in Florida, 12 here. Mm -hmm. And then I generally will go back to Florida for the last few days. So which stop is this one? That's a good question. Number four, I believe. Yeah, well, four or five. Long ways to go, my friend. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> it's all fun. The batter is Austin Barnes as he works against Joe Smith. And that pitch is a little bit outside. Joe, as he uh, works for the Angels, is appearing in his second game this spring. What were your thoughts on uh, watching Jared Weaver today? I was alarmed. Mm. And... Again, it's spring training. The ball does fly here. And obviously, Mr. Casimir had his own problems. But right. with Jared, the question is velocity. Can he get it back up? Will hitters just sit on his off speed? Can he be effective? Will he have weapons? Right. And right now, it doesn't look like he has many weapons. Now, it's early in spring still. I think it's too early to pass judgment, but it is alarming. It is concerning, considering because this is the type of outing that you're most worried about. Right. And this could happen at any time during the season as he adapts to doing this. Can you compare anybody in recent years, maybe in your time, that as a right-hander, not a lefty? It seems like there's yeah. an easier transition on the lefties that has to go through this. That's a great question, Jose. A number of pitchers have gone through it, just not to this degree, maybe. Verlander has gone through it. He's yeah. not throwing 98 anymore, but he's throwing 92, 93. Right. That's the difference here. Jared's not even close to that. And... It's hard to watch. He's been such a great warrior over the years, a great pitcher. And you know he wants more. But who knows? Maybe it's not in there. Maybe he simply needs to build up a little more. I don't know. There's a bouncing ball that was hit to Simmons off the bat of Sagadin, and the Angels turn a double play easily right there. So just like that, Joe Smith has gotten two outs, and Elian Herrera, the nine-hole hitter, will be the next batter. Well, the Angels are going to have to pitch well if they're going to be successful. And we uh, talked a little bit about, oh, I don't know if there's issues so far this early in spring or not, but uh, maybe some concerns. Here's one that's lined in the right center field. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Cutting the ball off is Cole Calhoun, and he will hold Herrera to a single. That was a nice play there by the gold glover. As many times it can distinguish yourself as to what level you're at as a fielder. And it doesn't translate into errors or not. Just things like this. I mean, think about a game like this one and people scoring so many runs. Let's put a man at second base right now. Very likely, uh, you know, this could be another run. That's right. And it's interesting, guys. I was talking with Chris Coughlin yesterday. Just got traded from the Cubs to the A's. And he made the point that Joe Madden would make to him. And he said he learned a lot from Madden. Madden, of course, his roots are here. And he said that Madden said, listen, you might not help us with a hit today. But you can help us that way, defensively. You can help us on the base paths. Think of a way to help this team win. And what Chris said is it kind of removes the pressure, the individual pressure, because you're playing for the team. And Cole Calhoun, he does a pretty good job of that. Jack Peterson just lifted a fly ball to Daniel Nava. Easy play in left, and it's a quick hitting for Joe Smith. So nothing doing for the Dodgers in the top of the fourth. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Angels have a 7-5 lead on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
7-5 Angels as we get ready to move to the bottom of the fourth inning. Visiting with us in our booth here in Tempe, Ken Rosenthal from Fox Sports. There's a new pitcher for the Dodgers. Chris Hatcher replaces the veteran Jamie Wright. Hatcher was in 49 games for the Dodgers a year ago. 3-5 record, 3.69 ERA in his first pitch on... Cole Calhoun, he shows signs of bunning with the shift on. Lays off the pitch for ball one. It's one ball, no strikes. Trout and Pujols will follow, and they've all been dangerous so far in the first three innings. Hatcher ready, and here comes the next pitch. And sure enough, Cole Calhoun tried to bunt that one and fouls it back. One and one in the count. He's been encouraged to do that with that shift on him. Once in a while, go out there and drop one. It's not going to change the shift. What's going to change only is the fact that uh, the shortstop's going to just creep in a little bit more, which might open more holes for him to hit through to the other side. Right-hander set gets the sign from Grandall. Next pitch, a cut and a miss, so it's one and two. Ken, let's talk a little bit about the AL West. Angel fans, uh, I'm sure, uh, wanting to get some of your thoughts on the division. Uh, Give us your um, crystal ball right now. Here well, my March. crystal ball, Terry, is always off, so I'll do my <laughs> best. It's pretty clear the two best teams on paper are Texas and Houston. Maybe Houston and Texas in that order. And there's a cut and a foul tip held by the catcher, Calhoun. A strikeout victim went away. I like Texas a lot. I like the addition of Desmond. From what their people are telling me, he hasn't gotten a ball in left field yet, but he's adapting really well. He looks good in batting practice. Gives them another bat. That's a pretty dangerous team now. And once Darvish gets back, which they expect, of course, they'll have Hamels and Darvish at the top. They're a very good club. I was so impressed with them in the division series against the Blue Jays last year. Just the way they played, really the way they played the whole second half. Houston, obviously, they got Correa for a year now, a full year. And that alone will make them better. The addition of Ken Giles will help them as well. I expect them to be really good really the entire year, and I like Doug Fister coming over there, too. Uh, that is a team, probably, right now, the team to beat in the division, but at the same time, Texas will be there, and if the Angels, if things break right for them, sure, they could be in it. Seattle is a mystery to me. There's so many new players there. In Oakland, I expect will be better than people think, but maybe not good enough to contend with Texas and Houston. Mm -hmm. Two strikes here on Trout. Mike has already scored two runs, driven in a run, has a walk and a triple, and he pops this one back foul on the right side, out of play. Let's talk about the Dodgers and what you've seen in the additions they made, and also how they, the strategy they use, because of all the acquisitions and player removed from rosters, added claim, they still did not trade any top pitching prospect. Correct, Jose, and I think that was definitely part of the plan. They are taking an unusual approach to their rotation. They're kind of coming at you in waves and in numbers. Now, they don't have Grinke anymore. They've got a bunch of injury risk up and down. They've got some pitchers out right now. But they expect that with four pitchers coming back the second half, if not before, Ryu being one, McCarthy, Frankie Montas, the kid, and Brett Anderson, that they'll have plenty coming. And they may even use some of their top prospects in the first half of the season because that's when they'll be needed, perhaps. And until this all sorts out, they're just going to keep trying different things. Now, they've got Kershaw at the top. Obviously, that's fine. Great. Best. But beyond that, from Maeda to Kazmir, everybody else, it's not Zach Greinke. So it's going to be a different-looking rotation. I think they'll be a very good team. My goodness. <laughs> There's Trout blasting one out to left field, and that ball's going to smack high off the wall. Another extra base hit for Mike. He keeps on trucking. A double here with one out, and Albert Poole holds the batter. Ken, we say my goodness about I know. twice a game. I shouldn't guy. say it huh? because obviously it's almost <laughs> the norm, but... I check out the, I'd like to check out the exit velocity on that one and some of the others so far this spring. Best player in the game? Not even a question. And when you talk about the Angels, and you talk to other people, executives in the game, they don't rule out the Angels because they say, hey, the best player in the world is on their team. And when you have that, you're way ahead. Now, Harper has 
come a long way and certainly is a rival, but he's not a center fielder. Carlos Correa, by this time next year, Jose, we might be talking about oh, the same breath as Mike Trout. Through the force. Here's Albert at the plate. A couple of RBI hits. He's also scored a run. 7-5 Angels. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Runner at second. One out. Chris Hatcher working in relief for his first inning, and the pitch. Albert hits one well in the right center field. That ball's in the gap in right center, and running it down out there is Van Slyke. Trout did not tag on that one. He did not get the good read on that one, and he remains at second. Mike was caught in between thinking that ball's going to get over Van Slyke's head, who had a nice angle. The way Van Slyke was gliding after the ball told you he had control over it. And then try when he wanted to retrieve, go back and tag. It was a little bit too late. Oh, it's hard to believe he didn't advance on that one, but he didn't. Even the best player in the game sometimes has a little scuff here and there. Spring training. <laughs> so here's C.J. Crone. Crone has gone 0 for 2. Good to see Albert with that type of swing. You know that opens up for him, of course, Ken. Absolutely, and. Actually, off the back, guys, I thought that was in the gap. Yeah. And that's why Trout got caught in between, obviously. But it's kind of impressive just to see Albert out here already. Really impressive, actually. And one thing about him, he wants to play, loves to play, and will work his tail off to play. One thing with Albert, I mean, you know him back from the day in St. Louis. Not only he won't say it, but he'll show it. Remember, he had that broken forearm. Last, uh, last season in St. Louis, people said, well, it's a fracture. He's supposed to be out maybe six weeks. He misses, what, 17 games? Something right. like that? And he has a habit of doing that. <laughs> and it is actually kind of the measure of a guy in many ways. Now, obviously, everyone has different pain thresholds and different injuries affect players in different ways. But to see certain players play with the pain they do, it is always impressive to me. And, in fact, I just wrote something last week about Miguel Cabrera. And one thing that is not appreciated about him enough is his ability to play with pain. Yes. And he amazes his teammates with that. Yeah. And when the best guy on your team, or one of them in Albert's case, is like that, it kind of shames all the other players into playing with lesser nicks and different things. There is absolutely no doubt. I've witnessed this for so many years when... You have somebody who doesn't have as much time to say, you know, my toe hurts, but I'm, if he's playing, I'm not even going to say that my toe hurts or even visit that training room. It's, it's so true, Jose. <laughs> and it's like that in any walk of life, right? The guy who is the best or woman who is the best in your field, you're going to take the lead from that person. And that's what happens with the players like Albert, like Cabrera. Throw in there Robinson Cano. And all he went through last year, too. Absolutely. And... Jeter, when he was playing, Jeter was incredible. He would never admit he was hurt. One ball, one strike is the count. Two outs and the next pitch, and that one is outside. Ken, on a personal side, uh, you still write. You mentioned your uh, latest article, but you do a lot of uh, electronic uh, things now, a lot of television work. Uh, what, uh, what do you like the best? I like it all, Terry, <laughs> but actually, the writing is where I started. It's, it's what I've always done. It's yeah. my roots, yeah. and I actually have so, so much fun in spring training when I get out and I'm able to write stories about players that I, I'm really not able to do during the season sure. because once we get started, things get rolling, the news starts coming in, and et cetera. Right. So that is truly where... Here's Crone golfing a ball deep into left field, and that one is going to smack off the fence out there. He goes in his second and just slides in safely with an RBI double. That ball came close to leaving out down the left field side, but it brings home Trout, and the Angels add on. It's now 8-5. So anyway, to finish up the thought, yeah, that the writing part is truly what I've always done, and kind of where I feel I'm home. And television is great, and I have so much fun doing it, but it's not quite the same. It's just a different, obviously, a different medium. Sure. And I've experienced amazing things doing television for Fox, all these World Series and All-Star games, but I like to write about those games, too. Sure. 
That was golf shot there by CJ Crow, man. Sure was. Right off the dirt. <laughs> Little bloody action there on that one. Yeah. Here's Navo, whose bat has been hot this spring, and he lifts that one foul on the left side, back and out of play. You tell me, in a regular season, right conditions, what does Nava add to the Angels? Jose, I'm not sure, but I'm encouraged, obviously it's early in spring, by what Nava and Gentry are doing. And the thought process is, in a platoon situation, can they get solid average left field production out of both of them? Here's one that's tapped softly over on the right side. It's right at Adrian Gonzalez. He will flip over to the uh, pitcher covering Hatcher, and that's going to end the inning. Well, Ken Rosenthal, we enjoyed the visit. Uh, sorry it was as short as it was here today, but we don't want to take any more of your time. We really I appreciate, appreciate you coming Thanks, up here. Thanks, you got it. Ken Rosenthal joining us from Fox Sports. We have completed four here this afternoon at Tempe Diablo. The Angels have an 8-5 lead on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Fifth inning here at Tepe Diablo Stadium. Javi Guerra, who is a former Dodger, will get ready to face the Dodgers here. Sure, he knows a few faces over there, and that's third base dugout. He replaces Joe Smith. Joe worked in the fourth inning and gave up a hit, no runs. Did not walk or strike anybody out. So Javi Guerra is the new angel pitcher. And this will be his third appearance this spring. He's had a couple of scoreless innings. Here is set working from the stretch first pitch and that one misses high a first pitch fastball. Well, going back to when he made his major league debut was with the Dodgers back in 2011. Garrett saved 21 games and 23 opportunities. Here's the right handers next delivery and he misses high with that one. So the count two balls and no strikes one in Denton Texas. Stand 6 1 around 190 pounds career 150 in a third innings. 125 strikeouts. 2 0 pitch uh, another fastball misses 3 and 0 the count. Here is set and the 3 0 delivery. That's right in there. That's a called strike. Javi Guerra broke in with the Dodgers in 2011 and was with them through the 2013 season. 
last couple of seasons spending time with the Chicago White Sox signed with the Angels as a free agent signed a minor league deal the pitch that's lifted foul down the left side down around the Dodgers bullpen it stretches alongside the foul line they have a pitcher warming up a right hander right now so full count three and two Here is ready, and the payoff pitch, a swing and a miss. So he strikes out an old teammate of his, Andre Ethier. That's the first down. Good job there. He had fallen behind on him, 3-0. Came okay, right back, was able to get the fastball down, a couple of fastballs up in the zone to begin with, and quickly make the adjustment with that front foot and his stride, which at times gets away from Guerra. <laughs> So the batter now is Adrian Gonzalez. And the first pitch in there on him. Javi Guerra is 30 years old. He'll turn 31 in October. 6'1", goes about 225 pounds. Next delivery, it's grounded sharply on the right side. Should be an easy play, and that's going to be Escobar with that shift on. The uh, third baseman playing on the right side who makes the uh, stop and the throw to first base. So it'll be a 5-3 ground out, although on the right side of the infield. Looks like your brain has to be convinced that it was not a 4-3. <laughs> so many years in scoring 4-3s on that side. And there goes Escobar back across the infield. So two are out. Scott Van Slyke will be the next batter. Here's the pitch, and that one misses for ball one. Well, as we saw between innings, Albert Pujols heading back into the clubhouse. Terry, good day for Albert. A couple of hits. Looks more comfortable, and there's no doubt there has been no lingering issues with his foot as he has played full speed every single time out there. Here's one that's lifted in the air into right center field, and it's going to drop in between Trout and Calhoun, and that will be a base hit. So two out. Single there for Van Slyke, who's had a pair of hits now. Dodgers have a base runner with the Angels leading this ball game 8 5 here in the fifth, and Randall will be the next batter. And now it looks like they're going to uh, pinch hit. And this is Cody Bellinger. His father uh, played a little bit in the big leagues, Clay Bellinger. Yes. And the pitch on Cody. He takes the first one for a strike and then a snap throw to first. And diving back to the bag is uh, Van Slyke. As did Scott Van Slyke's father, Andy Van Slyke. Yep. Scott's had a nice day today. He has smoked the ball three times. Victim of a great play by Johnny Giovatella, who robbed him in that first inning. No balls and one strike here on Bellinger. Young uh, prospect in the Dodgers system. They're high on him, and he takes that pitch. It evens up to Cal. One ball, one strike. Bellinger has had six at-bats this spring with three hits. Here's the next delivery, and that's a bouncer out of the reach of Gia Vitello, and that's going to be another two-out hit. So the pinch hitter Bellinger has a single. That'll move the uh, runner over to third. Corey Seager will be the next batter. Runners at the corners. There's a lot of balls finding holes. 20 hits already combined between these two ball clubs halfway through the game. Well, Jose, you know that spring training is underway when you get the Angels team information guide, the media guide, if you will. It looks awesome. And uh, we have in front of us the new 2016 Angels information guide. Angels communications department. Tim Mead, Eric Kay, Adam Chachko, Matt Birch putting together... 
A, a fine product. And on page 54 of this year's team media guide, the uh, bio of our producer engineer, Darren Chan. Darren Chan is right below you on page 54, Jose. He is right well deserving. His biography his and yes. yours. Yep. DC is now in his 16th season as the producer engineer of the Angels Baseball Radio Network. I also see the most interesting man in the world, Amari P. Gonzalez. <laughs> There's a bouncer hits a short. It's fielded there by Simmons. And the flip over to the Angels second baseman Johnny Giovatello will be a force out to end the inning. Jose alluding to Maury P. Gonzalez, Angels Spanish TV play-by-play -play broadcaster. Well, we are headed now to the bottom of the fifth. As we go there, the Angels are leading the Dodgers. It's 8-5 on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Well, a few changes for the Dodgers as the Angels will bat here in the bottom of the fifth. They have a new battery. Mike Bolsinger is the pitcher. Jack Murphy is the new catcher. And also staying in the ball game for them, taking over at first base is Cody Bellinger. He replaces Adrian Gonzalez. So Bellinger will still hit fifth, and looks like Murphy will bat for Gonzalez in that number three spot. So the first batter up for the Angels here is going to be Androlton Simmons, who's had a pair of hits. He came into the game with only one hit all spring, but two for two today. And the first delivery, Bolsinger misses one ball and no strikes. Let's pause for stations to identify themselves on the Angels Baseball Radio Network. Terry Smith, Jose Mota, and our producer engineer, Darren Chan, with you here from Tempe Diablo Stadium as the Angels and Dodgers match up for the first time this spring. And here's a fly ball hit right to the right fielder. Under and making the grab on that one is Van Slyke. Simmons is set down for the first time today. Catcher Giovanni Soto will be the batter. The Angels will uh, play the Dodgers again on Friday. And that'll be at Camelback Ranch. And then the uh, two teams will have a couple of exhibition games. Uh, they'll play each other 
back in Southern California. And there will be uh, four regular season games uh, between the Angels and Dodgers in uh, the month of May. Those games will be the uh, 16th and 17th at Dodger Stadium and the 18th and 19th. And uh, that will be at the Big A. There's a pitch that misses for a ball on Soto. So it's three balls and no strikes. Here's the next delivery. And that's a strike on the outside corner. Here's the next delivery. That's a bouncer that's hit right back to Gunslinger, and his throw is in time. So Soto is set down for the third time today. Johnny Giavatella will be the next batter. Bolsinger uh, right now is trying to win a spot, maybe as the fifth starter in the Dodgers rotation. They've had the injury issues, so he's hoping that... Uh, he might be able a guy to kind of fill the gap for them, at least when the season begins. He made 21 starts last year for them. He rode that shuttle between Oklahoma City and Los Angeles a few times last season. He was uh, designated for assignment by the Diamondbacks back in November of 2014 and then traded for cash considerations to the Dodgers. He has a good curveball, probably his best pitch. Here's the next delivery. It's bounced on a high hop on the third base side, a foul ball. Segedin uh, made the stop on it, but it was foul. Angels have an 8-5 lead, batting with two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The score update brought to you by Experian. Get serious about your credit by visiting Experian.com. Giovatella has bounced out to short, bounced out to second today. Well, Singer's next pitch. That's lifted in the air into right field, and it's right at the right fielder Van Slyke. A couple of putouts for him in the inning, and it's a 1 2 3 inning. So, five in the books. The sixth is coming up. It's 8 5 Angels on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Now, 
Angels make a lot of changes as we head to the sixth inning. We'll pick those up for you in just a moment. Fans, here's a deal for you. 1995 gets you proactive plus a rotating deep cleansing brush. It's valued at $45. You're guaranteed to get clear and stay clear, or you'll get your money back. Call 1 800 644 5944. That number again, 1 800 644 5944. Well, the Angels have uh, changed up just about all the positions out there. I think the only one who's still in the ball game is Giovanni Soto. The new pitcher is Al Albuquerque, and his first pitch is ball one. Yeah, this is where Mike Sosha wants to see Soto go out there and work with Albuquerque. It's supposed to be a piece out of the Angels' bullpen. Here's the next delivery. Albuquerque misses inside with that one for a ball. Javi Garrow who worked last inning for the Angels, worked a scoreless inning, giving up a couple of hits. Didn't walk, and he struck out one. Albuquerque is pitcher number five of the day, and that pitch is in there for a called strike. How has Albuquerque fared this spring? Well, today he's appearing in his third game. He's worked two innings, allowing five hits and two runs. He's had to pitch out of trouble. Mainly because, of course, the fastball still does not have the type of command that he's looking for. And Mike Sosha, of course, and the Angels and the staff are looking for a better command overall from what has uh, come with Albuquerque from the past. Here's the next pitch. There's a fly ball that's lifted into center field. Backpedaling is Nick Buss, who has replaced Trout, and he will make the catch on that one for the first out. Rest of the changes for the Angels besides uh, Buss, who just made that catch, and Albuquerque, who's pitching. G-Man Choi is now the first baseman, replacing C.J. Crone. Sherman Johnson takes over for Johnny Giovatel at second. Ray Navarro is the new Angels' third baseman as he replaces you know Escobar Roberto Baldacchine is the shortstop and there's a ball grounded to him it skips off his glove he picks it back up and throws late to first base that one pretty much just ate him up probably this judge just the speed of the ball getting to him as he tried to back in got his feet tangled up got his hands out of position it was not able to make the play and there are times, of course, when it's very unpredictable here what happens in Arizona where it could be a little soft early in the spring and then it speeds up on you very quickly as the ballparks and those diamonds dry up. So that will be an error the way it looks. And on at first base is Sagadin. Here is Elian Herrera, who's back with the Dodgers. He was with Milwaukee last year. And he takes the first one a little bit low for ball one. It's 1-0. One oh. He's a player that current Angels third base coach Ron Renicki, former manager of the Brewers, really liked. Said Elian brought a lot to the table off the bench, especially as a national leaguer. Ironically, Ron Renicki finished last season as a Dodger third base coach. Yep. Did a lot of great things in changing their approach to base running. And uh, the difference was easy to see. Here's one that's fouled off on the left side. And the count one and two. Angels in the outfield. Todd Cunningham is the new left fielder. He replaces Daniel Nava. Nick Buss in center. And the new right fielder is Rafael Ortega. So that's it as far as uh, the Angel changes. Only starter still in there is Soto, the catcher. There's a ground ball through on the right side. That's going to be a one-out base hit for Herrera. So his second hit of the day. Jo Dodgers have something brewing here with one out. Runners at first and second. Jack Peterson will be the next batter. Albuquerque is set as he works from the stretch. And that's a little bit low. 
this inning here kind of following a pattern uh, for Albuquerque so far this spring. For sure. He's got to pitch out of trouble. Slider has been pretty decent when he's been able to throw it and keep it down. And that pitch has gotten him out of trouble more than the fastball has. Here's the next pitch. That one is low. Two balls and no strikes. Infield is playing it at double play depth and the new look angel infield to pitch. That's in there for a called strike. Fans MLB.tv premium everything you have come to expect and more. New low price for 2016. Watch every out of market game of all 30 teams live in true HD on over 400 supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Here's the next pitch. That's fouled back to our left out of play. For Jack Peterson, hopefully the idea of cutting down that swing, which will lead to cutting down on the strikeouts, will be one that he can put into play a little bit more here in his second season in the big leagues. But he had 20 home runs before the All-Star break, only six after. And to the point where at one point he lost his job in center field. always had a great eye. We'll have combined the walks, strikeouts, and the power. He had a 30-30 season a couple of years ago on the minors for the Dodgers, but last year uh, as an everyday player for them in the big leagues, he stole only four bases. Here's the next pitch. Uh, cut and a miss. So he is down on strikes, and that's something that... Uh, you can do against Peterson. Struck him out. That's the second out. Albuquerque found the right guy in that situation who did not count down on that swing. He went back to the breaking ball, which has been his go-to pitch here so far. Andre Ethier getting ready for his fourth at bat. 0 for 2 with a walk. Pitch on its way, low, snap throw to first, diving back to the bag goes Herrera. Albuquerque will take time. He's a slow worker in the pitch. That's lined in the center field, diving and the catch on that one is the center fielder bust the ball will drop in they'll score a run and the Dodgers get a little bit closer it's now an 8-6 Angels lead that was a low line drive bus came charging in hard went lunging forward trying to catch it but couldn't quite hold on to it good effort RBI hit for Ethier well, Andre Ethier trying to get some more at bats and he's been a dependable guy with so many injuries the Dodgers have had through the years, last couple of seasons, especially Carl Crawford, Yasiel Puig. It's been Ethier who's having a solid spring. They're going to bring a pinch runner in for Andre Ethier. And the pinch runner is Noel. And he is a guy who can absolutely fly. Rico Noel. Terry, you and I were having this discussion recently. <laughs> this conversation, I should say. Yeah. Rico Noel was clocked as the fastest player going first to second on a steal. Number one last year. He was in 15 games for the Yankees, and here's the pitch. That one is a ball, a snap throw to first, just getting back to the bag is the lead runner over there, and that is Herrera. A lot of throwing for Giovanni Soto having a good time. Throwing behind the runner at first base, now behind the runner at third base. The veteran catcher knows very well how to use those open lanes. I'm sure there's a nice open trajectory for his throws. 
And there goes Noel. The pitch is low, and it's smothered, and that's hit by the catcher, Soto. So that's an easy stolen base. Well, we just mentioned uh, Noel and that blazing speed, and he got a, a very good jump there on Albuquerque and steals that base without a throw. Easy. Noel is just a little guy. He's that base runner at second, 5'8", about 170-pounder. He does have a great teacher on that bench. And his new manager, Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts stole over 240 bases in his career. And one of the most memorable stolen bases in the postseason of recent years. The Boston Red Sox. A stolen base, Terry, that changed a whole series. Yeah. Dave Roberts. Jack Murphy, who's batting for the first time in this ball game, came in behind the plate. Counts full on him. It's now three balls and two strikes. This is Murphy's first at bat all spring, and that one he takes for. Well, let's uh, check the count there. I thought it was a 3 2 pitch. I guess they were off on the scoreboard. Now uh, they're questioning the home plate umpire. Jim Wolf on that one. He's being questioned for both sides. Yeah. The Dodgers side, the Angels side. Well, if it was ball four, they're not going to give him a walk. So it's three and two, we'll assume. And the pitch, he lines that one in that gap in left center. That's going to split the outfielders and drive in a pair. And at second base with a two out, two run double is Murphy. And this is an 8-8 eight, eight ball game. No, Murphy didn't want to walk. He wanted to hit, and there it is. Gap approach, left center field. Albuquerque, with the commands he has had and the issues he's had, had to come into the zone, and as a hitter, you're sitting dead red. Well, the three runs that Albuquerque has allowed in the inning are all unearned due to the error earlier in the inning by the shortstop, Baldekin. But the Dodgers have come back to tie it up. No lead has been safe in this one. The Angels have had a 3-1 lead, a 5-2 lead, an 8-5 lead. Dodgers keep coming back. They scored the game's first run. The very first batter of the ballgame, Jock Peterson, homered against Jared Weaver, who gave up three home runs today in just two and two-thirds innings. Still haven't seen one outing by Albuquerque where he's looked comfortable, Terry. Yeah. One ball, one strike now on Van Slyke. He's the seventh batter up in the inning. Next pitch. And that's in there for a called strike. Albuquerque's oh, next delivery. Way low and outside with that one. Two and two. Albuquerque's going to walk off the mound now and try and collect his thoughts. He's now close to 30 pitches. 27 overall. He's ready. Here's the next one. And there's a swing and a miss. And down on strikes goes Van Slake. He was fooled by the off-speed stuff. And that will end the inning. A couple strikeouts in the inning, but three runs for the Dodgers, and they have tied it up. It's 8-8 eight, eight as we go to the bottom of the sixth on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Dodgers make a number of changes. They have a new second baseman, Micah Johnson, a new third baseman, Brandon Hicks, new right fielder, Trace Thompson, SoCal native, and Rico Noel stays in the game. He takes over in left field. So the top of the Angels batting order, and this is Rafael Ortega batting for the first time in the ball game. He's hitting out of Escobar's spot. Yanel went 0 for 3. And there's a pitch in there for a strike. Olsinger retired three in a row in his first inning in the bottom of the fifth. He misses high with that one for a ball. Looks like G-Man Choi is waiting on deck. He came in to uh, play first base. He's batting out a Cole Calhoun spot. Next pitch, a little bit low and inside. It misses. Fans, if your computer is running slow, go to mycleanpc.com. Get a free computer diagnosis. In minutes, you can activate MyCleanPC software to clean out the junk that may be slowing down your computer. Visit mycleanpc.com. There's a pitch that Ortega tries to hold up on. A breaking ball gets him, struck him out. First strikeout in the game for Mike Bolsinger. Does a good job staying right with it. As Bolsinger had some trouble with the left-handers last year. Only allowed a 224 average against right-handers, 287 against lefties. And hoping to get consistency out of uh, pitching to both sides of the plate. Glove side, got to get a little stronger, especially inner half, of course, on the lefties, as you see here. And commanding the outer half against right-handers. The arm is there. Had a tough going in September, five starts, one and three record. 7.08 ERA. G-Man Choi at the plate. He's taken a couple pitches. They've each been out of the strike zone, so it's 2-0. and oh. Choi has gone 4 for 17 this spring with a home run. Saw him hit one yesterday against the D-backs. And he takes that one for a ball. Did we ever... Uh, Get the reason why he did not bat right-handed against the lefty? Well, we're going to find that out. Yesterday's maybe game. maybe that uh, switch hitting plan is out the door now. Mm. There's a pitch on the outside corner. Call strike. If you're going to stay with a plan, I'm guessing spring training will be a great time for you to work on it. But Choi decided yesterday to hit left-handed against a left-handed pitcher. He did. And here he takes ball four. He walks on five pitches, matching up against the right-hander, Bolsinger. So the Angels have a one-out runner on base. Ray Navarro will be the next batter. Dodgers' bullpen is quiet. No action for them right now. Bolsinger working in his second inning. Looks like Kyle Kabitza has come out into the on-deck circle, so he will be batting out of Albert Pujols' cleanup spot. Albert the DH today. Yeah, it's good to see Albert swing the bat the way he did today. Smoked the ball. Up the middle and the other way twice. Albert was two for three with two RBIs, scored a run. Mike Trout had another solid day. Double, triple walk. RBI scored three runs. Watch new. Calhoun had a decent day. One for two. Single walk. He scored two. Now, I remember uh, going over this number with you earlier. Mike Trout scored 22 runs in 22 games last preseason. Yeah. There goes the runners. A bouncing ball hit on the right side. It's... Fielded there by Johnson, who flips to the shortstop seeker, and he can't hold on. That's a mistake on uh, both sides, but starts with Johnson. Uh, even uh, had Seeger held on, I don't know if Choi would have been out because it was going to be very close there at second base. So the Angels have a couple on with one out. Well, the runner in motion. Johnson not sure. Now they're having a little talk over there around the bag with Corey Seager. I think Seager was surprised to even get that ball thrown to him. 
They're just going to score that a fielder's choice. No error on that play. There had to be an out on what is a routine play on that one. Yeah. There had to be an out, so there should be an error. I hear you. Huh? Well, spring training is for official scorers to work out some of the kinks, too, Jose. All right. Oh, and one to count on Kibitza. Kyle Kibitza is just one for seven so far this spring. Count even on him, it's one and one. Here's the pitch, and that one is high. Well, after the 2014 season, when the Angels got Kibitza from the Atlanta Braves, we heard a lot of talk. He might be the Angels' third baseman of the future. When the 2015 season ended, David Fries was not re-signed, so third base became open this offseason. But the Angels went out and uh, brought in Yunel Escobar. And think about this. I mean, the Angels' transition as to whether Kubisa was or not started even before the season ended when they called up Caleb Coward right. to play when David Fries was out. Right. There's a cut and a miss by Kubitsa, and he is retired. So a strikeout, the second one in the inning for Bolsinger. And now the Angels need a two-out hit. Sherman Johnson will be the batter. He's hitting out a C.J. Crone spot. C.J. went one for three with an RBI double. Sherman's on a nice job, especially in these top situations here with men aboard. Here's the pitch. And Johnson looks at that one, and it misses for ball one. Johnson has only had four at-bats, but he has two hits, one of them a double, and he's driven in three runs. Next delivery. That one is inside on him. Just holds those hands close to his body, near his back shoulder. Able to have very little movement going forward. Encouraged a lot last spring training by former Angels hitting coach Don Baylor to be more aggressive. The walks will come because you have a natural knack for not swinging outside the strike zone. Next pitch and that's fouled back behind the plate. Be interesting to see where Sherman Johnson ends up this season. Last year was his first year in double A and he really struggled hit only 204. Terry there's a time when you had to earn the promotions. 204 meant you were going back to double A automatically. Uh, no I, question. I, I, that's why I said it'll <laughs> yeah. be interesting to see where he lands. Yeah, so the game has changed even that aspect. Three and one to count. I mean, you came to spring training hoping you'd have an everyday job at second base if you had 204. I hear you. And, and if that happened in double A, you might be back in A ball the next spring. Absolutely. There's one that's fouled back. But again, as you mentioned, Johnson has done a good job when we've seen him this spring. Work the full count here. He is a patient hitter. He'll pick up his share of walks. Here's the next pitch, and he lifts that one foul on the left side, backing out of play. It's a good job able to uh, adjust the swing a little bit more. Wait a little bit longer, shorter strike to the ball. Need to be more conscious of the outer half, which will get you better prepared and lined up to stay on the off speed if that's offered to you. Here's the next one. He chops it sharply, but it's right at first base. Bellinger is over there. He was solo to the bag, and that's how the inning will end. Unassisted put out. Angels had a little threat, but failed to score. Here in the bottom of the six, so six completed. The seventh is next. It is 8-8 eight, eight. Angels and Dodgers here in Tempe on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Fans, don't forget the 20 game flex plan offers a variety of game options to choose from, which includes opening night, premium matchups, and popular promotional giveaway nights. Visit angels.com slash ticket plans. So Cody Bellinger is the batter for the Dodgers, and the new Angel pitcher is lefty Nate Smith. His first pitch was in there. Here's the next one, and that is in there as well. So the count jumps to nothing and two, a lefty-lefty matchup. Nate Smith recently made an emergency start in place of Andrew Heaney, who will be on the mound tomorrow. There's one that misses for a ball. And in that uh, start for Nate Smith, he were two innings, gave up three hits, and he also uh, gave up three runs. Here's the next delivery. It's fouled off on the right side. First five batters gave him a little bit of trouble, including a guy named Robinson Cano. He took him deep, and then he settled down. And that's all Mike Social wanted to talk about, how he settled down. And so many times you start evaluating young pitchers and put them out and leave them out in tough situations, all to see how they handled that adversity. Here's the next one. That one bounces in, and the count, even it's two and two. Smith replacing Albuquerque, who gave up three runs, but they were all unearned last inning. He allowed three hits in his one inning of work and also struck out two. He comes out looking pretty good. Lowers he, the ERA. Even though he did not pitch well. Yeah. There's one that's fouled back on the left side out of play. Seventh inning here in Tempe. Each team with eight runs. Dodgers have had 13 hits. The Angels have had 10. Here's the next one. That one misses low. So it's a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the payoff. That's a liner through the left side of the infield. One hopper that bounces out to the left fielder, Todd Cunningham. So Ballinger, since coming in, has had a pair of hits. I bet he's had some nice tips from former big leaguers, especially his pops. Good seeing. Get some line drives through the infield today. Everywhere. So here's Corey Seeger. That Cody Bellinger mentioned his uh, dad played in the big leagues, and he actually was part of the Angels championship club in uh, 2002. Clay Bellinger was with the Angels briefly that season. So I'm here for a limited time. Right. You see exactly in the, how uh, much he appeared in games. Here's the pitch. That's foul back. I can remember one of the first conversations I had after uh, coming to the Angels to be one of the uh, team broadcasters. First conversations with Bill Stoneman, who was the Angels general manager then. And he said, I know you're coming from the Yankees organization. What can you tell me about Clay Bellinger? Hey, Terry, and you said? I gave him the scouting report. You said he's a winner. Because I knew uh, him quite well. We were together for several seasons in the Yankee system. <laughs> and Bill said, I appreciate the information. Fully documented. Right on the money. Yeah. Here's the pitch. And there's a cut and a miss. Off-speed pitch. That really had Seeger fooled. So two and two the count. Clay Bellinger. Appeared in two games for the Angels in 2002. Yeah, there you go. He gets a ring. He got a ring. Yeah. By the way, one at bat, struck out. Had also appeared with the Yankees, 99, 2000, and 2001. Out of uh, Anianta, New York. There's a pitch that misses a little bit low, which of course for a long time was a Yankee. That was uh, their <laughs> rookie club. Yeah, Anianta. Oh, remember Anianta, that? Anianta. Yeah. The uh, New York Penn League. I think our uh, good friend Art Masmanian might have uh, been at that uh, 
City and the Yankees organization in a coaching position. Here's a ball chopped on the first base side. G-Man Troy fielded it right by the bag. Steps on the bag for the out. Then he fired to second, but he did not make a good throw to second base. So Ellinger, who was the runner advancing on that ground ball by Seeger, will be safe at second base. But Seeger is out on the chopper right near the first base bag. Fine play by Choi. As he came down, just did not have it correct footing or enough weight on the back foot to fire away and make a lower throw. Good job by the left fielder Cunningham backing it up. But Troy had plenty of time at least to hit the inside lane, and that's what happened. Because he did not open up enough to clear that lane and give a nice low throw to Baldo Keen. So the batter now is Barnes. Austin Barnes, who's been their DH, he's had a home run here today. And he takes that pitch for a ball. An 8-8 ball game in the top of the seventh inning. Nate Smith is set. A peak at second. He delivers. And that one misses for a ball. Nate Smith pitched mostly at double-A Arkansas last year and uh, also at Salt Lake. See if he might be ticketed for uh, Salt Lake this season. There's a pitch that bounces in and gets away from the catcher, Jet Bandy, and that will easily allow Bellinger to move on to third. So he's there with only one out representing the go-ahead run. Bandy, after that one, uh, bounced in there, just couldn't find it initially, and it was back behind him, back towards the backstop. So three balls and no strikes. And the Angels opening series at the Big A is right around the corner. Monday, April the 4th, and Tuesday, April the 5th, the Angels will host the Chicago Cubs. Every game matters, so visit angels.com to purchase your tickets today. Angels have brought the infield in with that go-ahead runner at third base in the pitch. That's lined in the center. That's an RBI hit. So sharply hit by Barnes. He has his second RBI of the ball game, and the Dodgers are uh, back on top for the first time since the first inning. They lead it 9-8 here in the seventh. The infield comes in. Those gaps get way bigger in the infield, and your approach should be just as we saw there from Barnes. Still think up the middle and think through the infield. He's had a nice day. Here's Trace Thompson set to bet. This is his first time up. There's a great athletic family right here in the Thompsons. Kid that uh, grew up watching a lot of Angels games. DC has some nice tie ins with the Thompson family. He has. Thompson batting right-handed, and the pitch on him that was in there for a strike. The Dodgers got him in a trade with the White Sox this offseason. And he's trying to win a spot as a reserve outfielder for them. DC uh, alluded to him, works with uh, Trace's dad, Michael, on the uh, Lakers radio broadcasts. Of course, uh, Trace Thompson... With uh, his brother Clay, an all star guard for the Golden State Warriors. There's another uh, brother who's uh, played in the past in the NBA, Michael Thompson. One ball, two strikes on Trace Thompson, who hit 295 in 44 games last year for the White Sox. Former second round pick of the White Sox, Trace Thompson went to. Santa Margarita High School in South Orange County. Yes, he did. Really displayed his abilities in that stint he had with the White Sox last year. In a year which uh, they gave a lot of young players a chance to come up. Here he lines one into left field. A sinking liner, and it's not caught by Cunningham. It drops just in front of him. He tried to nab it before it hit the ground. Couldn't. 
And that's going to be a base hit for Thompson. So Barnes moves up to second. He wasn't sure whether that ball was going to be caught or not. He moves up just one base. But the Dodgers are threatening to add on to their lead here. They're up 9-8. Have two on with one out. Well, that makes Thompson now 4 for 17 here in the spring. Lincoln Johnson will be the next batter. Johnson batting for the first time in the game, hitting out of Herrera's spot. He went two for three. And the first pitch, that one misses ball one. It's one ball, no strikes. Johnson bats from the left side. He's another player who has very good speed as he takes that one for a ball. He came over in the same deal from the uh, White Sox this December. Micah Johnson, uh, just a few seasons ago in the minors, 2013 season, he had 84 stolen bases. He's got to get him on base, that's all. And there he swings and misses that pitch. One and two, the count. Quite simple. Getting on base improves your quality, gives you more weapons. You can use that speed, but also staying off the air, hitting ground balls. Here's the one two. He was jammed, fouls that one back behind the plate. It's 9 8 Dodgers here in the seventh inning. Score update brought to you by Experian. Get serious about your credit by visiting Experian.com. Angels manager Mike Sosha has a lot to think about. It has been a display of poor pitching for the Angels. On the positive side, the bats have uh, continued to wake up since yesterday. Yep, bats have heated up a bit. Here's the next pitch. That's a liner out of the reach of the shortstop, Balderkeen. And now the ball gets away from Bust, the center fielder. So they're going to get one run. They're going to get two runs. And stopping at second base is Micah Johnson. Well, they'll get at least one RBI on it, but they do score two runs on it. And now they have an 11 to 8 lead. That's the kind of game they would like to see more of from Micah Johnson. Right through the box, hard hit ball. They'll be adjusting the at bat, turning that dial back a little bit more. And Thompson flying around the bases. All the way from first to, base. To that he, error, he was absolutely galloping. So they will give Johnson a single on that one, even though he ends up at second base. And an error will be charged on Nick Buss as the ball got away from him in center field. And that enabled Trace Thompson to uh, score all the way from first. So the Angels' second error of the ball game. And it looks like Charlie Culberson is going to pinch hit. So he's batting out of Jock Peterson's spot. And here's the first pitch that's high and away. Peterson went two for four for the Dodgers today with a home run. Scored a couple runs. Getting a lot of ground at second base is Micah Johnson. He's bouncing around back there. And never got the attention of the pitcher Smith. Now he does. One ball, no strikes on Culbertson. Here's the next pitch. That's high and away. Snap throw to second and easily getting back to the bag is that base runner Johnson. Dodgers have used four singles in this inning. Also been a wild pitch and an error in the inning. So 
Smith is set a look at second. Here's his next pitch. That's a liner in the right center field. That's going to fall in. Johnson can fly, so he will score without a throw from second base. And it's a pinch hit RBI single for Culbertson, and now it's 12 to 8 in favor of the Dodgers. So Nate Smith having some troubles here. Five singles in this inning. I nice hit number 18 allowed by Angels pitching. Mike Sosha has seen enough. 32 pitches in the inning for Nate Smith. And not too many of those were in the quality zone. So he retires only one batter and will be lifted, and the Angels will go to the bullpen. We have a break in the action. We're in the seventh. It's 12 8 Dodgers on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Josh Zaid is the new Angel pitcher. We have seen him in one other appearance uh, this spring, and he worked a scoreless inning. Former Houston Astro, who hasn't even been in the Angel organization for a month. He signed uh, last month. So he will take over. Signed just a few days before pitchers and catchers reported. Yeah. He is the seventh pitcher in this ball game. We're in the seventh inning, and that one misses for ball to count one and zero. Stands six four, two hundred and fifteen pounder. He went to Vanderbilt University and to Tulane University, two thousand and nine tenth rounder by the Phillies. Here's the pitch, and that one is outside. Two balls and no strikes. Dodgers are up by four runs in this game by far their biggest lead they had not led by more than a run coming into this inning and there's a pitch that's cut on and missed Rico Noel batting and I think Billy Epler the Angels GM knows about uh, Rico Noel he was in the Yankee system a year ago and did see some action for New York talked about how fast this young man is and the pitch that's fouled off on the right side. So it's two balls and two strikes. Ready is Zai. He okays the sign. And here comes the next delivery. This is chopped on the right side. It's handled by Johnson to flip to second just in time. Angels get out 
The uh, base runner going first to second. Culberson on the fielder's choice. So that's the second out in the inning. Risky play there by Sherman Johnson, but one that uh, pays off for him. That's a long throw in this type of inning. Does a good job trusting that he could get it there. Got the job done. So runner on at first. Noel, when he uh, came in to pinch run, stole second. He's going to draw a throw. Pretty close play. He gets back to the bag safely. Zion has appeared in 48 Major League games. Well, with the Houston Astros. In 48 innings, he has allowed 56 hits, 42 strikeouts, 19 walks. Zide stepping off the rubber. He was uh, paying close attention to Noel and ends up bluffing him back to the bag over there. There's a pitch that is on the inside part of the plate. That's a called strike. Zod has one career save, uh, career ERA in those 48 innings. 5.25. Here's the next pitch and a broken bat pop up foul. It's going to land right in the Dodgers dugout. Boy, the bat shattered there by Jack Murphy, the batter. So he's going to have to come back and get some new lumber. Nice job by Zahn getting right in those knuckles. Jack Murphy has kind of the uh, Dennis Eckersley look to him, doesn't he? He does. He's got the locks. <laughs> and the stash. He does. That's a good stash right there. Well kept. He was in the Toronto organization. Dodgers actually got him in the uh, Darwin Barney deal last September. There's a pitch low and outside on him. One ball, two strikes. There goes the speedy Noel. The pitch is a ball. Throw to second, and he is safe. So we... And it talked about him when he came into pinch run last inning. He stole second. And an inning later, he steals second again. He can fly. He can really shorten that distance. But he takes off all in the first three steps. With a good lead, he puts that front shoulder down. And as they say, it's all downward from there. 283 stolen bases for him in the minors. He's had five in the big leagues. And all those came last year with the Yankees when he got to the majors for the first time. There's ball three. It's three balls and two strikes on Jack Murphy, who played a little winter ball this past winter, Jose, in Australia. Excellent. Here's the pitch. And that's ball four. So this has been a long inning, and the ninth batter of the inning will be stepping up. That walk looks like just the second one given up by Angels pitching today, and the only other walk came way back in the top of the first. It doesn't appear like that, though, does it? No. A lot of notes being taken. A lot of arms being used. Brandon Hicks will be the batter. This is his first time up. You can expect the minor league list to get a little bit longer here in the next couple of days. And guys that need to come in and fill in with backups. First pitch on Hicks. That was in there. It seemed like a long time ago when Casimir and Weaver were on the mound already. <laughs> yes, it did. Was that today or was that yesterday? <laughs> 
Here's the next pitch. And there's a cut and a miss for strike two. No balls and two strikes. And for both Weaver and Casper, they would like to forget this one. Like, yeah, like it was yesterday. Yeah. Both had rough outings. Well, they're each going to have to turn the page on it. Two outs, two on. They've scored four in the inning. Dodgers up 12-8 here in the seventh. And that is outside. One ball, two strikes. Angels will have some players batting for the first time in the ball game. We get to the bottom of the seventh inning. Zide's next delivery. And that is right in there. Struck him out looking. And that's how the inning will end. So that's it for the Dodgers. But they do come up with four runs. And they had five singles in the inning. They have a 12-8 lead on the Angels as we get ready for the bottom of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time coming up on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Todd Cunningham will lead it off for the Angels as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Mike Bolsinger in for his third inning of relief in this ball game. Trace Thompson has moved from right field over to center field. And they also have a new right fielder. We'll uh, check out who's playing in right field for them. Here's the pitch. That's a little pop in a shallow left. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Cunningham is first time up. The new right fielder for the Dodgers is Alex Hassan. And the next batter up. For the Angels uh, batting for the first time in the ball game will be Nick Buss. And he drops down a bun on the third base side. Tough play and Hicks unable to make the play as he went charging in. He tried to barehand that ball. So the Angels have something brewing here. A couple runners on base. Couple of hits to start the inning off against Bolsinger, who had not allowed any hits in his uh, first two innings today. Well, the way both offenses have been going today, all you need is to think about some base runners and somebody that can pop a gapper or maybe get it out of the ballpark, like a Jet Bandy. Good job by the table setters, Cunningham and Bus, getting things started here. This is Bandy's first at bat. 
Cunningham, who's the uh, lead runner at second, uh, led the inning off with the base hit. He's back in action after being sidelined with a little bit of a wrist problem, a jam wrist. Kept him sidelined for a few days. First one on Bandy, a strike. And the next pitch. That's low. Bandy so far this spring doing a nice job. Limited at bats. Three for eight. We'll check out the Jeep Out of Town scoreboard for you here on this Wednesday in just a moment. Brought to you by the Jeep Cherokee. An estimated 31 miles per gallon highway. It's the perfect choice. Visit jeep.com for more information. Ground producer Bandy. Here's a chance. Checks on that one. Little bit low. Two and one the count. Royal split squad beat Milwaukee 7-5. Hosmer and Gordon with home runs for Kansas City. The other Royal split squad lost 7-5 to Seattle. Drew Butera hit a home run for Kansas City in that losing pause. Here's Bandy chasing one and fouling it off on the right side out of play. And let's pause for stations to identify themselves here on the Angels Baseball Radio Network. Jerry Smith, Jose Mota, and our producer-engineer Darren Chan with you here from Tempe, where the Dodgers lead the Angels 12-8. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Bandy uh, taking that pitch, and it got a piece of him. He's hit by the pitch. A pitch was rising up and in on him, and the Angels now have the bases loaded with nobody out. Roberto Baldacane will bat. This is his first time up. Baldacane hitting out of Giovatella's number nine spot. Johnny was 0 for 3 today. The yeah, Baldacane that we have seen as he's filled out, he's become way more aggressive. We see the ball jumping off nicely off his bat during batting practice. Gone two for seven so far this spring. Goes after the first pitch and pops one in the air. The new right fielder, Alex Hassan, will make the catch. Tagging is the runner at third. That's Cunningham. He will score. It'll be a sack fly. And also uh, tagging at second and going to third base will be Nick Buss. So the Angels get a run. And now it's a 12-9 Dodgers lead with... Runners at the corners, only one out. That aggressiveness paid off here for Balokin. He gets a pitch up elevated, able to stay behind it, get some backspin and get it to the right side for the sack fly RBI. Here's Ortega set to bat. He's been up once with a strikeout. Rest of the scores in the Cactus League. Indians with a 5-1 lead against the Cubs. That's in the ninth. Rockies lead the Giants 8-6 in the ninth inning. Carlos Gonzalez, his second home run this spring for the Rockies. The A's had 17 hits against the White Sox. That game is still going on. And Oakland leads that game 10-3 in the eighth. Texas Rangers scoring runs today against the Reds. As the next pitch, it's chopped softly on the first base side. Handled by Bellinger, the first baseman. And he will apply the tag on the uh, batter, Ortega. Going to first base on the play. Bus will come in to score, so the Angels get their second run in the inning and trail it 12 10 with two outs here in the seventh. Nice to see the payoff here. Cunningham starting things with a line drive left field single. Bus with a nice bunt. He's playing out where baseball did. Bandy gets hit by the pitch, and here's the Angel with two quick runs, both on productive outs. So the batter is Choi. And there's one that's blowing in. In that Texas-Cincinnati ball game in the ninth inning, the Rangers have had home runs from Moreland, Desmond, and Stubbs. Texas with 18 hits in that game. Up 11-4 in the ninth. And the D-backs have a 7-4 lead against the Padres. They're in the eighth. Needless to say, Terry, with the scores you're giving, there's been a lot of hitting, so the bats are catching up right now. Yep. Some uh, high-scoring ball games across the Cactus League today. And this one, no exception. It's 12-10 Dodgers here in the seventh. Next one on Choi. Takes that one for a ball. And think about Ian Desmond, who has power and speed now playing a new position in left field for the Rangers. He could easily become a 
We're close to 30 home run player playing half of the games at Arlington. Right. He is no stranger to the 20 mark. Here's the pitch that Choi takes for a ball, and he's worked a 3-1 count here on Bolsinger. The Dodgers have action in their bullpen. It's like they have a left-hander up in the pen. Bolsinger being extended, of course, stretched out at 52 pitches right now. His next one, it's bounced over the mound, but out near short, Culberson, who is there, will make the play, and that's how the inning went. But the Angels get a little closer, come up with a pair, had two hits, and end up leaving one runner on base. Eighth inning is next here in Tempe. It's a high-scoring one today. 12-10 Dodgers leading on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Josh Zide, who came in, got the final two outs last inning, will begin the top of the eighth in a 12-10 ball game. Dodgers leading the Angels' first delivery on Bellinger. That one is fouled off. That's what you want to see right now. You have a two-run deficit, and you want to see from your bullpen, especially somebody like Zide, who has big league experiences, go out there and throw strikes. Bellinger's had a couple of hits since coming into the ball game, And here's the next pitch. That's right in there, so the count jumps to 0 and 2. I like his approach. He's got a flat bat. Seems like a, a shorter bat. And he gets to that zone very quickly. Here's the next delivery. That one misses inside. Infielders are backed up. Outfield shading the left-handed hitter the opposite way, and he gets another base hit right up the middle. So he's been impressive here since uh, taking over. Woody Bellinger, born in Chandler, Arizona. Last year, Rancho Cucamonga, 128 games, 30 home runs, and 103 RBI. Kind of has that uh, Don Mattingly look when he digs in at the plate, doesn't he? Oh, he's kind of built along the same lines. That's a good one. Yeah. But could ever uh, play out for him to have a career like Don Mattingly? Well, he will be some kind of a keeper. He also stole 10 bases in 12 attempts. 340 on base percentage. 150 strikeouts, 52 walks. Yes, he's a good one. Alex Hassan is batting, and this is his first time up. He's hitting out a Seeger's spot. 
took over at shortstop as well. And the next pitch misses. One ball, one strike. Corey Seager was 0 for 4 today. Only got the ball out of the infield once. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's way low and outside. Angels have two other pitchers available today. DJ Johnson and the oldest Guerra. Here's the pitch. That's low and away. So you're saying two guys have a chance to win the game. Yeah. Well, right. I guess if, if you had to go deeper, uh, there's plenty of other guys uh, down in minor league camp now, but at least on the uh, Angel roster for this game, two more are available. If he's saying more innings, I say stop. <laughs> Nine will be enough today. <laughs> you say I give. <laughs> there's one to tie, and that's ball four. So the first two Dodgers have gotten on to... Uh, Start things off here as we get the eighth inning going. Single will now walk. Charles Nagy is going to go out and have a word with Josh Zide. We want to remind you, if you are a poker fan, you can play in the Gardens Casino $30,000 guarantee no limit hold'em tournament this Friday. Visit the GardensCasino.com for more info. And please play responsibly. It's like Corey Brown is the batter. And so he's batting for Austin Barnes, who is the DH. Barnes had a good ball game, couple hits, including a homer, two RBIs. And that one is in there on Brown for strike one. Mentioned the Angels have Diolis Guerra available, and he has started to uh, warm up in the Angel bullpen. Here's the next pitch. That's hit sharply. That's a fair ball by the first baseman, Choi. It's going to roll down in the right field corner. They're going to get one on it. Another runner is coming home. The ball got stuck down there in that right field uh, padding down by the uh, foul pole. <laughs> Actually, Ortega is trying to dig it out. So the uh, second runner who... Uh, came in to score is going to have to go back to third base and one run on that one it's a uh, double for brown and they'll have runners at second and third that's a quick bat there by Corey brown former first rounder by the oakland a's back in 2007 smoked that ball as it approaches that inner half boy he was able to clear the backside and get that barrel on it so it's now 13 to 10 dodgers And the batter now is Trace Thompson. And if I'm not mistaken, that's hit number 20 of the day for the Dodgers. Yes, it is. There's one that's a little bit low and outside, and then a snap throw up the third base side back to the bag goes Hassan. 12 hits for the Angels on 10 runs. 20 hits for the Dodgers on 13 runs. And the work must continue, Terry, with the catchers. When they get the sign to throw behind the runner to keep working at it, you got to do it. Angels have brought the infield in. No outs here. Runners at second and third. Zide's pitch. That's low and outside. This game right now has seen 23 runs and 32 hits. And we're not finished. Hey, welcome to the Cactus League. There yep. we go. You may have to go through those uh, other scores again just to make people feel better. There's one that's missed. Well, we probably have a few more finals since the last time we went down the out-of-town scoreboard. 
Chris Thompson has a single and he scored a run his only time up. That was the last inning. See the Rangers had 18 hits through the first eight innings today. There's a ground ball on the left side. Nice stop there by Balduquin. And from his knees, he gets the throw over to first. And the two runners have to hold. Very nicely done by Balduquin. That was a terrific play. So that's the first out. Good job, man. You're playing in, not totally in, because you want to give yourself some room with a right-handed batter. And nobody out. Nice reaction and playing that ball on a nice angle. So Mike Sosha is uh, going to make a move to the bullpen, and we will have uh, another Angel pitcher to work in this ball game. That's it for Zide. Breaking the action of pitching change here in the eighth. It's 13 to 10 Dodgers. They have them at second and third with one out. Pitching change coming up on the Angels Baseball Radio Network. Angels getting ready to use their eighth pitcher in this game. The Olaskera will take over. Zide went one inning. He gave up two hits. Right now, a run earned. Couple of base runners his. He walked two, struck out one. And for Guerra, as he is about ready to finish his warm-up tosses, this is his third appearance. Two innings so far this spring. He's given up three hits and two runs. Micah Johnson will be the next batter. <laughs> now with one out, Johnson speedster. Second and third infield playing all the way in. So ready is Garrett. Takes a look at those base runners. Here's his first pitch on Micah Johnson. He cracks his bat, fouls the pitch off over by his on deck circle. Right off the cup. Johnson last up bat. And if we're getting the count of two strikes, really made a nice adjustment on cutting down that swing and from thinking pull and hit the ball way too hard. Well, he still thought way too hard, but uh, dialed it up to hit the ball through the box for a big RBI single. Garrett takes some time out there. He's ready. And here's the next pitch. That is low, or is it? No, called strike, says Jim Wolf. Low strike. 0-2 is the count. 
Green Wolf stayed right with it. Yep, and uh, he heard about it from the uh, Dodger coaching staff right there. They didn't think it was a strike. But the home plate umpire has the final say. And Mike Sosha said, good pitch. Yeah, good call. <laughs> Here's the two-strike delivery, and that's a swing and a miss. Struck him out. So Guerra comes in, strikes out the first battery faces. Angels pitchers haven't had a whole lot of strikeouts today. That's the fifth in this ball game. And they all have come after the fifth inning. Culberson will be the next batter. He has an RBI hit. He is only time up. The Dodgers came into this game collectively hitting 308 with a 383 on base percentage. That's going to sh be shooting up here tonight after the game. First pitch on Culberson. He takes it for a ball. In fact, the Dodgers ERA is a team coming into today with a 4-1 record. 2.50. Angels, on the same token, came in hitting 266, ERA of 5.22. Here, a very slow worker with the next pitch. Chopped on the left side. Long throw by Baldekin, and he gets it right there in time. Good job by Diola Scarra. Comes in with runners at second and third. One out and retires two to end the inning. Dodgers settle for one run. They had a couple of hits, a walk in the inning. No errors, and they leave a pair. Bottom of the eighth is next, 13 to 10, in favor of the Dodgers on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. We go to the bottom of inning number eight, and it's being brought to you by your friends at Rotolo Chevrolet in Fontana. Rotolo Chevrolet, pursuing excellence every day. You can visit them at Rotolo.com. That's Rotolo.com. Luis Avilan is the new pitcher. The Dodgers got him last season, last July, and a big uh, three-team deal came over from the Atlanta Braves. He figures to be a key piece out of that bullpen. Here's his first pitch, and this is lifted in the air by Ray Navarro. Very shallow center field coming in is Trace Thompson. And Navarro is retired. Second time he has batted today. Also in camp with the Dodgers, Terry on to a one-year deal is Joel Blanton. He resurrected his career last season. Pitched very well. The numbers on Bolsinger, who 
Avilon replaces. He worked three innings. He gave up two hits and two runs. Here's the lefty's pitch. That's way outside. And Bolsinger along the way had one walk, struck out two, and also hit a batter. This is Jeffrey Marte batting for the first time today. And there's a pitch outside. Both this hitter and this pitcher, they've had to wait a long time to get out there on the field today. Yeah, you don't see a lot of the guys are going to be part of your bullpen and have a lot of experience, have to wait this long to get their work in. Yeah. Here's the next one on Marte, and he grounds one out of the reach of the shortstop, Culberson. So Marte had to wait a while for his first plate appearance, and he delivers a one-out single. He's been swinging a good bat. Drove the ball well yesterday, a couple of doubles. Hit a three-run home run the day before. Reminds the end of some depth uh, third base. It's not looked very comfortable at first base, but uh, his biggest weapon is... The power potential. So here is Sherman Johnson, 0 for 1 day for him. And the pitch, lefty lefty matchup, that's low and outside. Terry, going back to Joel Blanton, and you talk about resurrecting your career. Kansas City, he went 2 and 2 with a 3.89 ERA, including four starts. But then for Pittsburgh, he went 5 and 0 with a 1.57 ERA and 21 relief appearances. Here's the pitch. Here's a one hopper hit the second. Might be two. Second for one. Relay to first. That is a double play. So just like that, the Angels are retired here in the bottom of the eighth. It ends on a 4-6-3 twin killing. Ninth inning is coming up. The Dodgers have the Angels by three at the moment. It's 13-10 Dodgers on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Driven by your SoCal Mazda dealers. Fans, don't forget, every moment matters. Join us this summer for Family Sundays, presented by Yakult Probiotic Drink in the Gate 5 Courtyard for free games and fun. Kids in attendance will also be able to run the bases. You can visit angels.com for tickets. Noel against the right-hander Guerra for the Angels. Diolis Guerra came in, got the final two outs last inning. Here's a bunt try, and it's fouled off on the third base side. Navarro was thinking that Noel might be looking to do something like that, so he was charging in, but couldn't quite reach that foul popped up bunt. Oh, and won the count. Noel's not ready to quit running yet. He was flying down that line. <laughs> 
So he is back in the batter's box, right-handed hitter. Here's the next pitch, and that's inside the attendance today, 6,019-6019. Angels will be right back here tomorrow in Tempe to take on the D-backs. Andrew Heaney against Shelby Miller in that one. Heaney making his first appearance this spring. There's a check swing and a slow roller on the third base side. Oh, no, Charles Nagy. When the Angels pitching coach is looking forward to seeing Heaney on the mound. He said, well, I've heard about the calm demeanor, the ability to put hitters away. Hopefully the flu bug that affected him last week is not going to be a factor tomorrow as he tries to get his work in and get a couple of innings in. So Charles Nagy Terry is uh, simple as they come, as humble as they come, says, I'm learning about everybody right now. Sure. Even though there's some guys here in the organization that he's known for a long time because he was at one point part of the Angels minor league system. Once in a while we saw also uh, be invited to be with the team in September runs and assist uh, Mike Butcher and the rest. There's been quite a turnover as far as personnel since uh, Charlie Nagy was last in the Angels system. Here's the one two sharply hit on the third base side and a nice play by Navarro on that low liner. Good job by Ray Navarro flashing some leather over there in third base. Oh, they played him at short, second, and third, and he's done a fine job at all three of them. That's good depth there where he was located. And puts his body in a good position to give in to that ball. They absorb it. Jack Murphy is the batter. Every time you say that, I'm thinking you're going to say Jack Murphy Stadium or something. That's right. Now Qualcomm. There's a pitch in there for a called strike. There's the Eck. Yeah, he, he resembles does uh, Murphy Dennis Eckersley a little bit. And the next pitch. He takes that one for a called strike. Angels have the infield back, outfield not too deep. Guerra ready on the next pitch, and he moves him off the plate right there with some high heat. Trying to shave that stash off. Huh? <laughs> Get a little haircut there. Up and in. That was one of those where you're thinking think you're going to dig in on me? I don't think so. And you're right because there's people taking notes out there by the Angel staff. Then he comes change up on you. He missed a little bit low with it. Two and two the count. Well, the only scare is one of those guys that uh, could surprise you at the end of camp. Now the Angels are going to have to make a decision on him. Counts even, it's two and two. One out here in the ninth, 13 to 10, Dodgers, and a swing and a miss. He got him, struck him out. Back to back on that combo, outstanding job. He was able to fix it when he missed low enough where the batter could read the spin, the speed a little bit more. He tailed off another one, a better one. Well, you can able to separate your fastball 92 93 to an 83 84 change of that you're going to get that kind of result often so the batter now is brandon hicks strike out his first time up well terry decisions on rule fives decisions on guys that are out of options and gara is one of those rule five players the angels uh, took him in that draft this past december from the pirates so he's either got a be on the Angels opening day roster or offered back. Here's the pitch. That's fouled back on the left side. It's going to land in the Dodgers dugout. And here's the Angels had a rule five player make the team last season out of spring training and Taylor Featherston. 
spend the entire season with the Angels. And now a member of the Phillies organization. Yeah, he's trying to make their club. There's a right-hander warming up for the Dodgers, and that is Gerald Cotton. So it looks like they'll be bringing him in to pitch the bottom of the ninth. One ball, one strike is the count here on Brandon Hicks. Here's Guerra's pitch. That's fouled back to our right, back and out of play. Terry pretty soon is off to uh, cook a few plantains with pops. Yeah, it was good to see your dad uh, here at the ballpark today. It's always good to see pops in his Dodger blue. And uh, when I was uh, nudging him, I said, well, I heard you're going to have a good dinner tonight. He said, yeah, Jose's going to cook. And then immediately after he... Uh, was talking about that. He said, you know, I, I'm a better cook than Jose. <laughs> He's got a few years ahead of me, <laughs> experience-wise. Two and two is the count. Angels will have one more crack at these Dodgers in the bottom of the ninth inning, trailing 13 to 10. Here's the next pitch, and that misses low. So it's a full count, three and two. Not in the lineup, and we didn't see, of course, Yasiel Puig, who has been uh, having a good spring. Came in good shape. And Dave Roberts has really opened the door of communication with Puig and hopefully straightened him out. He could be a key asset to their success. Next pitch, that's hit sharply, but a foul ball down the left side. I like the attitude from Dave Roberts, a former player himself who had to struggle to get to the big leagues and say, hey, clean slate. I don't care what's happened here before with Yasiel Puig. He's going to get every opportunity to start again. And that's pretty much all you can ask for. And Puig knows there are some things that need to improve, needs to change. Teammates expect that with maturation, he'll be able to understand and apply and no responsibilities that come with being a big leaguer showing up every day to play. Here's the 3 2 with two outs. That is a called third strike on the outside corner. A pair of strikeouts in the inning for Garris. He sets them down cleanly in the ninth inning. So the bottom of the ninth is coming up. Angels are down by three. It's 13 10 Dodgers on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Todd 
New pitcher in the ballgame for the Dodgers. We'll tell you about him in just a moment. Want to remind you, every fan matters when the Angels take on the Texas Rangers on Thursday, April the 7th through the 10th. Fans in attendance on Thursday, April 7th receive a Trout and Pujols double bobblehead. It's courtesy of Pachanga Resort and Casino. While supplies last, you can visit angels.com to purchase your tickets today. Right-hander Jarrell Cotton is the new pitcher, and Todd Cunningham is the first batter he faces. Lefty batter lines one into left field for a base hit. So Cunningham, since getting into the ball game, has been up twice with a pair of hits. And Nick Buss will be the next batter as Cotton works. This is his second game. We're two scoreless innings so far for the Dodgers. Bus batting, and he has a hit his only time up. Here's the pitch by Cotton. That's lined in right field. Boy, the first two batters have hit the ball hard. That's another single, and two are on base. And the Angels will have the tying run coming to the plate. So Bandy will be the batter. Fifteen hits in the ball game for the Angels. Dodgers have had 20 hits and they lead it 13 to 10. Bandy was hit by a pitch his first time up. Cotton is ready. And here's his pitch, and he hits him. So the ball keeps finding Jet Bandy since he came into the game. Second time he's been hit by a pitch, and the Angels have the bases loaded. Ball Duquesne will be the batter. Well, it's been a long day at the ballpark. One, one swing of the bat right here be nice to see. Angels have the winning run at the plate. Looks like we're going to have a pinch runner. Quinton Berry is going to run for Bandy. So Mike Socia pulling out all the stops. Gets a speedy guy at first base. The potential tying run. Cotton looking in for the sign. And the right-hander's pitch. That one is low. Cotton pitched at a lot of places in the Dodgers system a year ago. Triple A, double A, and two different Class A clubs. And his numbers were good. Six and two record, 2.45 earned run average. Here's the pitch. That ball was hit well in the right center field. It's out by the out-of-town scoreboard. It bangs off the wall. One run will score. Two runs are in. The Angels now have a little bit of confusion on the bases. A runner is caught in a rundown off a second. A third run now has scored. And this game is tied at 13. Well, Ball Keen who doubles in three to tie up the game is the runner who ended up being out trying to get back a second. But I don't know that it was really his fault. Quinton Berry, when he got to third base, he was being held up by Ron Renicky and started to run past the sign to try and score the tying run, then finally jammed on the brakes. But when he did, Baldekin was almost all the way to third base. So they end up getting him in the rundown. But it's a 13-13 game here as a result of that three-run double by Baldekin. So one out, no one on, and Ortega is the batter. Here's the pitch, and he drops down a bunt but fouls it off back behind the plate. Well, if it ends 13-13 after nine innings, you would think that that would be it, but uh, we'll just wait and see. Let's see if the Angels can get one more here in the bottom of the ninth. And here's the pitch. 
That one is low. Boy, wouldn't that be something if uh, the game is called after nine innings? You have one team with 20 hits, the other team with 16 hits, and neither team ends up winning the game. Here's the delivery, and that's fouled back to the screen. A wild day today here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. Cotton, who is pitching, has been uh, primarily a starting pitcher in the Dodgers system. He began his pro career in 2012, and there's a swing and a miss, and down on strikes goes Ortega. Fooled him off speed there. So Choi will be the next batter. But the Angels here in the bottom of the ninth have tied it up. Twenty-six runs in the game, thirty-six hits, and neither team has the lead. Here comes the pitch, and a big cut and a miss. This game nearing the four-hour mark today here in Tempe. And here's the next pitch. That's high. Choi, since coming in, has a walk and a ground out. And here's the next delivery. That's a little bit outside. So three and one. If G-Man Choi can keep it alive, Ray Navarro would be up. He's had an 0 for 2 day. Cotton is pitcher number six of the day for the Dodgers. And there's one that's in there for a strike. Angels have used eight pitchers today. Both starters struggled. Jared Weaver for the Angels gave up five runs in two and two-thirds innings, three homers. Scott Kazmir gave up five runs in an inning and two-thirds. And the next pitch chopped out towards second. It's fielded there by Jackson. In time. And that will get G-Man Choi. And that will end the inning. So uh, let's see what's going to happen. If uh, we're going to continue or not and it appears we are not so uh, apparently again we'll keep it right here it looks like uh, we're only going to go the uh, nine innings today the uh, two teams are starting to come out of their dugout so the uh, final score today the Angels 13 the Dodgers 13 and after all of that 26 runs and 36 hits. Neither team can claim a victory here today at Tempe Diablo Stadium. And maybe uh, rightfully so. Both teams uh, having monster days offensively. And we play to a tie. Dodgers had a tie earlier this spring. This will be the Angels' first one. Jose will be visiting with Angels manager Mike Sosha in just a moment. And uh, when uh, Mike joins Jose, we'll get some of his thoughts on today's ball game. Mike Sosha exchanging some pleasantries with some old uh, friends from the Dodgers side before joining Jose here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. Angels uh, tomorrow will be right here taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Let's go down to Jose. He's standing by with Mike Sosha. Thanks, sir. Uh, Mike, obviously what you don't want to see from Jared Weaver at this point is missing a lot of spots. How do you evaluate what happened? Uh, the results obviously not what you see, and how does he bounce back? Well, you know, he's uh, you no know, Weave is working hard, and it's one of those starts where he, he uh, uh, wasn't where he needed to be, obviously, and the Dodger hitters let him know uh, but he got his work in. It's a step forward. And, uh, you know, in five more days, he'll just keep keep the grindstone and hopefully uh, be ready for the start of the season. Any concerns at this becoming more of a pattern? No, I think, uh, you know, he didn't hit his spots like he did in Chicago and uh, paid a price for it. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just fastball command wasn't quite as crisp as it was the other day. 
Uh, that's important to him, and um, and uh, he'll he'll keep going. Mark, on the offensive side, a lot of solid two-strike approaches and results. Tell us about what's different this early in spring training and how does that transfer into the regular season? Well, I think the guys you're seeing right now are, are, aren't expanding their zone. They're, they're patient. They're waiting for pitches in the zone. They're doing a really good job. And uh, if we keep having that, especially the guys in our A lineup in the beginning, uh, they, they, they had great at-bats all the way through. All right, thanks so much. All right, Jose, thank you. Terry, you have yourself a great evening, my friend. Same to you, Jose. As always, uh, appreciate the visit with Angels manager Mike Sosha. Well, the final score again from Tepe Diablo Stadium. The Angels 13, the Dodgers 13. For those of you watching on TV, Jose will be joined by Alex Curry and have a lot more post-game analysis on the radio side. We'll have some more for you from Tepe Diablo Stadium as well. This is the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.